describe passionately. Please no distraction. Cry passionately for visitation. Lord, we cry for a visitation. Hold someone's hand by your left and right and let us pray in the spirit. Let my spirit, my soul, and my body host your glory. Lift your voice and pray. In greater dimensions, let my spirit pray, pray, pray. In higher dimensions, let my spirit, let my soul, oh God, let my body be a host, a host of your power, a host of your glory. In greater dimensions, let my spirit boast your glory. Let my spirit not just to talk about it, not just to preach about it. In greater dimensions, let my spirit, let my soul, let my body boast your glory. Are there people of prayer in this place? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just the strings. Um, Turn with me to Hosea chapter 12. I want to pray for you before we get to the word tonight. Hosea chapter 12. While I sat there, the Lord just put something in my spirit. Verse 13. Hosea chapter 12. Please. Hosea 12. Just be sensitive to what I'm doing. I'm about to pray for you. Hosea chapter 12. It says, And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel. That prophet was his hand. He used the prophet like you use a fetcher to draw water. And by a fetcher, you drew water. You are the one who drew the water. But the fetcher carried the water. And by a fetcher, you drew water out of a well. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. The place of slavery. The place where you don't have rights. Are we together? He says again, and by the same prophet, the Lord didn't just bring them out of Egypt. He says, and by the same prophet, they were preserved. Do you know why? Because when you come out of Egypt, Egyptians will still pursue you. It's not enough to come out. There must be a system that preserves you. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. 
and knowing that the Egyptians will still come seeking after them to make sure their testimonies only last one month two months and then they are taken again to slavery Pharaoh said what mistake did I make what happened to me that I let these people go and then the Bible says by the same prophet was he Israel preserved listen let me tell you this we are going to sit down a man of God went to meet Bishop Oyedeko he was going to get into ministry and he said daddy sir what advice would you give me as a young minister now that I'm going to ministry and he thought Bishop Oyedeko would tell him be prayerful make sure you fast make sure you teach the word in season Bishop Oyedeko looked at him passionately like a father would look at a son and spoke to him in Yoruba and said never fight alone that's my advice never fight the first rule never fight alone David you are going to fight who is with you whose son are you from which family do you come from what covenant is assisting you he said told him never fight alone never fight alone let me tell you this do you know the reason why many people remain in the same situation for a long time they have done everything physical but there is no prophetic push in their lives they stay like that they labor foolishly they they are skilled i have seen gifted people i have seen job applicants i have seen all kinds of people this system this kingdom you see is a spiritual kingdom I, I pray that god will help you understand this fast enough that in this kingdom everything starts spiritually when you spiritualize your mentality you have you have set yourself in order for a life of victory nothing ever happens in this life just by the arm of flesh it's a waste of time the arm of flesh is only relevant when there is a backing satan never attacks until he vets that the power to dis to defeat you is higher than the force backing you when satan comes to you he doesn't look at you he looks if there is any force backing you jesus i know paul i know who are you so many believers that you are in church that you are coming every week that you are a worker it doesn't justify that you have received this ministry i know what this thing has done in my life this truth you see and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt it's amazing how many people remain in difficulties when there is a route to cheap victory the kingdom of god operates systemically if you don't know how these things happen you can labor and labor and labor and labor and labor and create a theology out of your pain that this dimension is not possible and believe that any other person working in that dimension must be cut in corner spiritually somewhere no it told cain it says if you offer it paraphrasing according to pattern will it not be accepted the problem was never because you were king you refused to do it accordingly are we together i was hearing the testimonies of this these people here and i just sat down and in my mind i'm saying how many other people need the same thing but don't know how to receive it there are people who are not very wise there are people who are not very smart honestly there are people who are not very connected but among the many principles they painfully adhere to is the foolishness of believing the prophetic word of the Lord. And they have watched their lives enter dimension. And there are many of us who have come with our philosophies and exaggeration of intellectualism. We have stretched everything we know from border to border and all that is left in our lives today is shame shame that vetoes everything your studies whatever there is a way out brothers and sisters there is a more excellent way god brings us here because he loves us 
and because he wants to help us don't allow the patterns of failure to be too much in your life plenty of people have failed for you already why must you go through all of this again and by a prophet not by a man not by a preacher not by an orator not by a bible reader listen carefully not by one who oil was on his head like just pouring oil and by a prophet how you know he is a prophet is when you are truly delivered anybody can say go out the results justify the office the results justify the mantle because every office God institutes on earth there is a prototype of it in heaven are we together now so when you speak here on earth the same way that throne that system of governance allocated to your grace to validate that he truly called you in that dimension ministers to the people and there are angels that signify anointings listen carefully don't just be conscious of the presence of the holy spirit alone he's not the only spiritual force at work there are angels listen carefully that validate anointings there is a kind of anointing you carry and certain angels start following you there is a kind of mantle a mantle is not an anointing there is a kind of mantle you carry that certain angels come listen there is an office you occupy that necessitates the operation of certain not just angels angels are not the only beings that assist men in heaven there are many we only just know angels as we call them they are all messengers but they don't do the same thing the revelation of jesus which he gave unto his servant john he sent it and signified it by his angel not an angel his angel an angel connected to that dimension so you are calling to the healing ministry if it is true you are called there are a kind of angels that should walk so when the word of god because they confirm the word of his messengers when that word is released at the authorization of the spirit the holy spirit the holy spirit is the master governor of every spiritual operation so even when the bride speaks they watch on the spirit for permission when the spirit says let it be done let me tell you the same way the bible says the spirit came to resurrect jesus from the dead but we see the dynamics at the instance of the spirit an angel came rolled away the stone sat on it holy spirit you can come he rolled away the stone the holy spirit does not just walk maybe the way some of us think there are real angels so when you come for koinonia it's not just enough it's not only seats you have come to see the human beings you see are a very minute fraction of the hosts of heaven listen a church is not a church because of people a church is a church because there must be an access point from that church to the gates of heaven jacob the first mention of the word house of god genesis 28 jacob came it was a stone and a background no chairs no fasting no prayer no nothing and jacob got up he saw angels ascending that means if angels are not ascending and descending that is not the house of god he said this is the gate of heaven so a church is not a church just because there's a man standing and there are people sitting there must be an access point from that location to access heaven and to release realities to people are we together every challenge in your life is relative to the grace the mantle and the office that addresses it every challenge every challenge relative relative the same way you can meet a doctor and be rambling and say doctor sir something is wrong and he just laughs and just prescribes a b c and within days he has been trained to trivialize your challenge don't allow your situation make you believe that just because it is insurmountable to you it means it's so for everybody that's pride oh are you hearing what i'm saying 
that you have tried to access favor that you have tried to access dimensions in the spirit to see an unusual dimension of the gift of the spirit work in you that bankruptcy is not generic it's only personalized to you which is an expression of your limitation in understanding the ways of god are we together i want to pray for you you don't know, it's not by kneeling down and all it's just by receiving we are going to get to the word but i just i just felt in my spirit the lord was impressing while i sat back there to just speak a word so that certain challenges you have done your best you are sincere i know that we are rising in faith god is helping us but the truth is that many of us at this level you have done everything to be done physically you need that prophetic push i know that i speak over your life all the time but remember i'm prophesying as i am commanded i can prophesy as i wish god will still honor it but when he commands then be ready for dry bones to become an army are we together now in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare father your word declares and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet were they preserved father i stretch my hands let it be an extension of the hand that brings breakthrough that brings deliverance and i'm prophesying to someone who is in a pit right now that there is no human way you should come out in the name of jesus christ everywhere across this auditorium if there is anyone in an impossible situation i bring you out now in the name of jesus i send an anointing into that pit where you are and i declare that by a mystery in the name of jesus let the axe head that has sunk into the water i command that axe head to float now I command that axe head to float now. I decree and declare there are people here, the pace that you are moving in life will never allow you to serve God in truth. The pace is too slow to have time for God, and it's a strategy by the devil because provided he keeps your mind on tea and bread provided he keeps your mind on these things you will never have the time to focus on the things that matter in the name of jesus the bible says the hand of god came upon elijah and elijah ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of ahab down to Israel. in jesus name i supply speed to your destiny i command supernatural speed speed to your destiny Speed to your destiny. Speed to your destiny. Hallelujah. We are praying. Paul spoke and I said, Once and again, I desire to come to you. He said, But Satan hindered us. But Satan, I desire to come to you. That's your breakthrough speaking. That's your lifting speaking. I have desire to come, but Satan hindered us. I have desire, just like you prayed since last year, you were calling me out. I desire to come, but Satan hindered us. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, any dimension in the Spirit or any allocation from the Spirit that was designed by the ordinance of God to be captured in your destiny by now and by witchcraft or whatever manipulation you have not entered into it shekatos kabatiada i command the embargo that stands between you the embargo whether spiritual whether human in the name of jesus i smash it out of your way now i smash it out of your way now I want to pray for you there are many of you your helpers are not even aware the devil has made sure that every door that will connect you to them has been closed every door nobody willing to help you you suffer alone you pray alone you fast alone you labor alone let me tell you this let me tell you this even if you have money 
it doesn't guarantee that you have favor favor is not all about money in fact money is, is less than one tenth of the mysteries of favor favor is the ability for men to rise up and come to your aid not just once but to remain so as a reality you can never enter your rest when you are doing everything alone who can rise up for you when adversity speaks who can rise up for you at the gates where you are not there no one advocating for your interest in the name of jesus i stretch my hands by the grace and the anointing of the spirit i decree and declare i push you by prophecy into the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers i push you by prophecy receive of their ministry i prophesy favor over your life i prophesy favor over your life hallelujah two more prayers and then we'll sit down i want to pray for your finances and then i'll round up with your spiritual life listen let me tell you this you will never access finances the way many of us are approaching it that's not the way it works everything is first spiritual it's not by doing business it's not by getting a job doing business and getting a job is simply a system of collecting your spiritual allocation the bible says god has blessed us with all spiritual blessings but they reside in heavenly places in christ you don't need it there the word must be made manifest it must be made flesh are you hearing what i'm saying i want to pray for us listen let me tell you by the grace of god we are a people that god has helped and by the grace of god we are people who god has proven through this ministry that if god helps you financially you can have the time to serve him this demonic distraction that comes by looking for what to eat what to wear that stops us from praying that brings us into yokes that are uncalled for because our daily breaths must be met that distracts us there is no time to serve god seven days a week all you are doing is looking for money you get up in the morning money to sleep in the night money the holy ghost is talking the thoughts of money chokes his voice let me pray for you the bible says the prophet said by this time tomorrow by this time tomorrow i want to pray don't be foolish you have had the testimonies that happen money has a spirit that note you see is an obedient servant there is a spirit that controls resources it doesn't come just like that the spirit that the devil put in place to control financial resources is called mammon and you never never can access mammon without bowing to satan so if you want to get resources the world's way get ready to compromise your faith your life your integrity your everything for it but there is another system in the kingdom are we together now it says thou shalt remember the lord thy god for it is he it is in his office to give you the ability the power to prosper um a lot of people have thought that the power to prosper is concepts ideas insight i believe that but that's just the physical dimension the power to prosper is an anointing there is an exact anointing whose assignment is to call forth resources the same way noah sat there and the animals started coming on their own that's the power to prosper it calls forth people it calls forth resources it calls forth opportunities you don't just use your mouth to call it when that grace is on you it's magnetic it is true has nothing to do with ministry has nothing to do with a job a job business and every financial vehicle only supplies the value chain for its sustainability but it's originated from the spirit are we together I want to pray over our finances if you don't need it that's all right no I, I i want to believe not everybody needs it but truly there are people here is do you know do you know let me tell you this 
is very very i believe that it bleeds the heart of god when we come for a meeting like this where the spirit of god wants to build our spirits wants to help us to know him and all that is in our mind is waiting for when money prophecy will come wait it's, it's a terrible thing you will never grow that way nobody grows spiritually talking about money all the time it's an issue that by the spirit of god you should access be done away with and then you can focus if you don't believe you can solve money issues to know this is solved and turn and face god then there's no point receiving this prayer there is i'm not saying you should not get your job i'm not saying you should not do your business i train i teach people to be valuable but let me tell you this it's a waste if you keep this fan and it's not collected to electricity the fan has potentials this mic although you don't see a wire there is still a technology that ultimately connects it to a generator that you cannot see it does not mean it's not there off the generator you will, I, I don't have to collect the mic from you i just disconnect it from the generator and let you keep switching off and on you are doing the right thing it should work but because it's not connected to something something that was supposed to work doesn't work again are you seeing now so you are doing what you are doing this is actually how to on the mic and off it you are correct but because the generator is disconnected from the mic you do the right thing it still doesn't work it is the life of God it is that connection that activates whatever you do when this anointing is on you it doesn't really matter what you do whatsoever he doeth whatsoever he doeth prospers in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit Lord you have helped me I have seen your mercy and I have seen your grace you have helped this ministry we have seen your mercy father I pray that the same mercy and the same grace even in the area of finances I cry unto you right now let that grace let that unction come upon someone now let that unction come upon someone now let that unction come upon someone whose family has never believed they can rise. Lord, may that grace be a supernatural bailout system for a family that is in need of your help right now. May this anointing come upon your life and roll away shame. In the name of Jesus. By this anointing, I declare that whatever it is you are involved in, I don't care whether it has prospered or not, I command it, I instruct it to work. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for your spiritual life. Listen, in all your growth, if you don't grow spiritually, you are not growing. You can have all the money in the world like I just prayed for you. Listen carefully. You can have all the human connections but if you lose sync with what god is doing and you lose touch with spiritual realities then you will not last the value for every aspect of your life is that although these things are there your spirit is still alive unto god you are growing in an ever increasing dimension understanding not just what god wrote in the bible but his program for the nations for now if you lose touch with this present truth god's system of relevance then no matter what else you have you are irrelevant you will watch yourself being edged out of the move of god therefore i pray for you in the name of jesus every distraction over your spirit man i curse it now in the name of jesus christ i decree and i declare whatever has blocked the portals of the spirit from granting you access to the deep and the current speakings of the spirit the deep and the current speakings the deep and the current speakings revelatory dimensions that communicate this present truth i command those portals to be open now in the name of jesus christ whatever has closed 
and frustrated your appetite for prayer the ability to not just shouting up and down staying with god staying until your spirit man is energized i declare that tonight may you be brought to a new dimension of prayer fire whatever has made you comfortable with where you are spiritually that you don't even see the need to press again in the name of jesus may tonight's teaching plant a strange hunger in your spirit every door spiritually that you are walking in that my god did not open i don't care what dimension you are facing if his word was opened by satan to distract you i shut that door now in the name of jesus christ thank you jesus please be seated lord we give you praise in the name of jesus christ i welcome everyone tonight in the name of jesus it's my joy to bring us the word every time the bible declares that we should be instant in season praise the lord first peter chapter 2 and verse 9 i'll be teaching on something along the lines of first peter chapter 2 and verse 9 helping us to understand certain realities as far as kingdom legislation is concerned one of my greatest uh, prayer for us is that we are trained and equipped not just to see miracles this is a ministry that god has blessed with grace for miracles signs and wonders but i am passionate about inculcating and transferring spiritual understanding in believers you can know the efficiency of a man of god by the quality of the useful spiritual information listen carefully not just random spiritual information the quality of the useful spiritual information that is transferred to the average member not the ministers not the leaders their 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 level of spiritual excellence can be for obvious reasons but that when you when you hand pick anyone at random and discuss with the person over basic spiritual truths foundational doctrines in the kingdom and then especially doctrines that relate to our reigning and our victory you should be able to have an intelligent conversation with such a person that is proof that the man of god and that ministry is careful enough i am passionate about teaching the word of god are we together now because it is in the teaching of the word of god that understanding comes and when understanding comes then the grace the fortitude to release your faith through obedience is released upon you so please i want you to pay attention especially for many of us who just come i know some of us have problems and challenges but don't forget don't forget that koinonia primarily is a place of encounter and it's a place of growth spiritual growth much more than a place of receiving the miraculous much more than a place of signs and wonders this place will always remain the place of signs and wonders but much more than that this is bethel the place of bread where the hallowed bread of the spirit is open and you receive but much more than receiving that there is an impartation so when you come while you are sitting you see that there is an anointing working in you as the word of god is taught there is an anointing you are not only hearing are we together now you are not if all you are doing is hearing then this is a lecture maybe spiritual in context but it's a lecture what makes it the ministration of the spirit is the presence of the anointing the bible calls us able ministers and it says that we are ministers after the spirit no matter how articulate and how deeply spiritual i am if this anointing this presence factor is not there then it's a total waste of time are we together so i'm saying this so that we must be passionate about growth young and old we come from different spiritual backgrounds and uh, we aspire for a similar spiritual destiny 
but in the interim our hearts must be open to educate our mind spiritually it's terrible to be ignorant as a spiritual person you don't need to know everything but there are foundational doctrines of the kingdom that you have to know everyone personally not just to have a tape that talks about it not just to have a book that talks about it not just to attend a ministry or to submit to a man or an anointing that knows it it is a revelation that must be inculcated as part of your understanding are you getting blessed now it's very very important your edge in life much more than the coming of the anointing is the awareness and the understanding of the systems of the kingdom how it works when you call someone a master why is he a master every time i want to access my internet banking platform um gtb is one of my banks and i see them marketing something about a food expo that will be done and i see master chefs five or six of them who will be holding master classes all of them are called master chefs i had the opportunity to watch two of those people and i saw the way they demystified cooking they showed that cooking is scientific you can you can predict what will become in a notable level of accuracy that's called a master a master is a master at foundations when you say you are a master that means the foundations of a system are things that you have at your fingertips you're a master driver there is nothing another driver does not necessarily know it's just that you are a master at that foundation you can turn a car sideways and still be driving it now that's mastery the same tools that someone uses is what you use but with a level of competence that produces a result everything you will need for victory is accessible to everyone but how we engage it is where the difference is so I not only want us to be sound in the word, to be able to quote scriptures, blood of Jesus, fire of the Holy Ghost. There are very ignorant things that believers do that is a pain to the heart of the Father. We should be able to grow spiritually in understanding, to be able to know what to do, what to engage, how to live in this kingdom. You see, the goal of this teaching, you're coming every week, is not just to prove that a man is called of God. There is a system of spiritual mentorship. Are we together? Your life should become something exact with time. You should begin to have an appreciation of the ways of God. That a time can come, you are well equipped to be able to serve the purposes of the kingdom without fear. Because you know what should happen. And if and when what you want is not what happens, there is a system you are aware of that can compel things to come to the obedience of Christ. If you are with me, say Amen. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Here's what it says. But ye are a chosen generation. Now this is a very interesting word. Because there were many generations. Many generations. In fact, many dispensations. The word generation there does not necessarily mean just an age range. You know, physically we have a bio biological and physical definition of a generation. A particular age range for some 0 to 15 some 0 to 30 make up a generation that's not what God is talking about here he's the word generation there's a word race race of people within a particular context of civilization he said that there you are a chosen generation what does that mean there are other dispensations other races of people but your race your spiritual generation has been particularly chosen so you are a chosen generation and this is where i want us to dwell you are a royal priesthood it would have been all right to say you are a priesthood you are priests but it says you are also royalty you are a royal priesthood then it says an holy nation a peculiar people that ye should with all these things the being chosen the priesthood the royalty the peculiarity 
all of that is to enable you show forth the praises praises the word doxazo the flaunting of a man's glory making his glory known show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light he called you into his light hold on let me help you understand this what makes you chosen what makes you royal what makes you a priesthood what makes you peculiar is the marvelous light you entered are you getting the whole thing now all of that happened because you entered his he called you into his marvelous light whoever enters that marvelous light is fortunate is blessed the bible tells us that some of these prophets saw these things they sought to walk in these dimensions they kept searching for what manner of times the spirit had revealed they knew that there would come a dispensation of men and women who will be granted archives to these things in fact some of these prophets prophesied it but they were not given insight to understand what they prophesied they just spoke it and left it there but the bible says you are fortunate in that you can not just enter his light but his marvelous light the light access to his mysteries he called you out of ignorance darkness the same expression that is used in genesis chapter one darkness void it's the hebrew word tohu wa bohu darkness ignorance um confusion lack of light lack of hope depression the same expression he called you out of darkness notice he didn't say he called you out of sin notice he didn't say he called you out of witchcraft notice he didn't say he called you out of the devil the major reason why satan sin the devil whatever it is oppressed people was the presence of darkness are you getting what i'm saying now so it's not like satan was so powerful they are called rulers of darkness every time there is darkness their dominion kicks in and he called you so how does god make people peculiar by introducing them to his marvelous light the bible says god who had commanded the light to shine out of darkness he says he had shined in our heart to reveal to us the glory of jesus the, the, the glory of the knowledge of god as seen on the face of jesus christ the marvelous light that means listen carefully that means although prophetically you belong to a race that the bible calls a peculiar people and a royal priesthood if you do not accept that that marvelous light is not any light that marvelous light is a spiritual allocation of knowledge that has been given to a dispensation this marvelous light is exact it's not just that god brought you into any light no the light of god is in levels there are certain lights he made to signify seasons to signify times not just the stars in the sky spiritually you would read in the bible every time prophets would interact with god sometimes he would tell them seal it you have seen this but just close it and keep it in other words it's not for this race of people how david tried david wanted to access the realities of the messiah david wanted to see redemption he pressed for it pressed for it he saw glimpses of it but could not put it together isaiah saw the virgin birth isaiah saw god becoming man they all saw pieces of it but nobody because there is a an allocation of spiritual knowledge there is a body of knowledge that is given to a dispensation of people and our generation is very fortunate we are not only fortunate because we are spiritual people we are, we are not fortunate because we are better than smith wigglesworth listen carefully we are not fortunate because we are better than all these saints the puritans and the rest we are fortunate because god by his election of grace not that we ask for it by his predeterminate counsel has chosen to bring us into a, a body of knowledge a body of knowledge that can separate us in experience even those who saw these verses only read about it many of them never walked in the experience let me tell you this there are things written in the bible that are not for everybody there are things written in the bible 
that sometimes are for an individual sometimes are for a race and those individuals not everything written in the bible was for people of old there are things written in our generation there are things written about you one day you will carry your bible and know this is me the bible says in luke chapter 4 the bible says jesus stood up for to read and it was given to him the messianic prophecy remember isaiah wrote this hundreds of years before jesus and jesus was not the first person to read it i they were talking about a man but who was that man every prophet who had access tried they would check against the reigning prophet and say no this does not fit john the baptist uh -uh, it almost fits but it can't be john and all of a sudden jesus comes and opens up the prophecy of Isaiah and begins to read the spirit of the lord is upon me anybody can appreciate it prophetically but there is an exact person it was written for are we together now look up i'm teaching you something if you read the bible as a book that spoke to someone but just applicable to you you are lying there are things written in the bible that have not been fulfilled by anybody outside our race a day will come you will look at it and know that this word was for our generation are you are you getting what i'm saying give me hebrews chapter 11 the last verse let me show you one of those things and then we'll come back to this hebrews chapter 11 read let's go let's start from verse 37 and then we'll go to 40 give us from verse 37 they were stoned they were sown asunder were tempted slain with the sword they wandered about in sheepskins goatskins be destitute afflicted tormented 38 of whom the world was not worthy they wandered in deserts talking about um the archives of faith the patriarchs of faith 39 he said all these who are the these all the guys that were part of those who were recorded i hope you know they never had the opportunity to read the bible because we are now reading about them so by the time we were writing about them there was just the um, some of the psalms and the torah and all of that the bible says they received not the promise there was still an expectation in the heart of god and they all did not receive it 40 he said god having provided what some better things for us who are the us the readers not the actors if you never got to read this you were not in that generation it is for those who will read this it says so that they without us as general as they were without us there is there are things written here that no generation has found it will take men of audacity many of us believe that everything that was written in the bible has happened is just the prophetic application no no one day you will open something and see koinonia right there not as a word you will see a chapter of the bible talking about exactly what is happening now many of you will never if i told you that isaiah prophesied about you pastor alpha as a person you may say yes prophetically until the spirit when you are called into this marvelous light listen he never said called into light because god made many lights and every generation partook of a dimension of light but there is a marvelous light the same way he made two great lights all the prophets had dimensions of god and based on what they knew that was all about god in their generation until another prophet came and another generation came with another dimension of god and the bible says here that so that they without us meaning there is something about koinonia that must be added to the bible in heaven then when you now read the saints plus the archives of koinonia it produces perfection Let me just allow you to settle down and then we'll take it again. Listen. I hope you know there is a book in heaven where things are recorded. I hope you know that when Paul was having his little teaching and Peter, the plan was not for that to be captured in the Bible. They were living. Is that true? Imagine, imagine in your mind, 300 years from now, let's assume that Christ chooses to tarry. 
none of us here i believe should be alive there's no reason why i should be on earth then i will be alive but not on earth are we together now now imagine that a young boy of 13 years or 15 years dead is now reading that ah, ah, in 2018 there was a service that service was held by somebody there was a worshiper called sam he's reading a story we are not reading it because we're the actors but the bible says even those who are the readers there is a part for them in prophecy here to fulfill so that when you now combine both the actors and our generation it will create that perfection there is still a desire in the heart of god in spite of what paul has done in spite of what all of them have done there is still a desire in the heart of god that there is a light there is a body of the revelation of god allocated for a generation none of their generation taught people to live in balance one of the problems with every other generation until our own is that there was a traceable imbalance are we together if there were prophets they had problems even during god's generals most of them found god but there was a level of light that was not given imbalance here and there So Jesus found where it was written about him. About him. Literally. Not about somebody that he applied to his life. He was the one they were talking about. I pray for you. Huh, that one day you will open the Bible. And see something. And God will tell you son. I know you may not believe it. But this verse was not written to a prophet. That you should receive by faith. This one when i said a man i will raise in the eyes of prophecy anybody can apply it by faith but that man was you that the, the bible centrally talks about christ but there are auxiliary revelations about individuals the central message of the scripture is christ but it's not only christ christ is the major doctrine perfect theology the entire focus of the bible is christ but not Christ alone, his bride. He found where it was written about him that a time will come, a generation will prosper, and that I am sending you. And you will think he was talking of Joseph until one day you read, and God will tell you it is this generation, and you are that person. Listen, notice. Every time God speaks about people, He never calls their name. Everybody has a spiritual name. There is a name in the realm of the spirit that men are identified with. Listen. Ah. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Did you ever see the word Jesus? He said, a virgin shall conceive. Let me tell you how prophecy works. And give birth to a son. And you shall call that son. Did you ever hear them call Jesus Emmanuel? Please talk to me. But did the prophet lie? It's God's system. So you will not find a Jimmy, but you will find a spiritual name that you know this is me. It was written. It will be difficult for you to receive because you say, out of the six point, how many billion people? No. Read the Bible. The captains of industry today were written. Bill Gates is in the Bible. All these guys they were in the bible it's not just that they were in the bible the prophet saw them you will not find bill but you will find him there this koinonia you see this meeting you see is in your bible here that you have read bible cover to cover God. I'm not talking of something that okay God sent Jeremiah oh God like you sent Jeremiah you sent me it's not true you see now the surprise I've not even gotten to my message tonight the surprising part is that demons know they are not in ignorance 
Why do you think spirits pursue certain individuals? No, they, of course, Satan hates everybody, but there are certain individuals. He will mark them, kill for them, do everything around them. Because you may not know that there is something written, that there is a part you have to play. Imagine when I was born. I'm sure my mother would just believe that she, she gave birth to whatever it is. You know, I didn't take breast milk. God punished the devil. The, the devil wanted to kill me from birth. I was fed on lactogen because he wanted to destroy me. My mother just felt she was carrying a baby. But if only she opened and saw that a woman will conceive. This is not Mary. Not Mary. That a prophet one day was scanning to a generation and saw they saw the generation of the baptism of the Holy Ghost with stammering lips and another tongue will they praise. They left it as a code. Every prophecy about you in the Bible is a code. It must be opened. Let me tell you what happens. I don't know why. Do you know Holy Spirit? Well, you are, you are the Lord of this teaching tonight. I don't know what is taking me to this dimension. But let me three, tell you three things that happens. When the code of your destiny is open from scripture, one, God changes your name. Listen. Let me tell you the concept of the change of name. Sometimes it can be physical, but more than that, notice, there was nobody whose prophetic word opened and a name was not given to him. Now, read your Bible. Cephas, Saul, Paul, Abraham, Abraham. Sarai, Sarah. Read your Bible. You see there. Thou art Peter. It didn't say your name is Peter. Peter, you have found it. You have found it. They have been calling you Cephas, but something opened your. You are Peter. Found it. You found it. I. You know, sometimes when I share these things in my spirit, I just, I want to be as simple as possible. One of my goals as a man of God is not to bamboozle you with complication. My goal is to communicate understanding because there are all kinds of people. But sometimes, you see, it's very difficult, very difficult to teach these things because you may never know. If God appears to you now, He will not call you by your father's name. He will call you by your name in the spirit. You will hear it. This is what I'm trying to tell you. You will never hear God say, A genie, no, no, no. A name is a code. When you use an ATM, there are people who use machines. Let me tell you, if this thing does not happen to you, there are dimensions of prophecy about your life that will never happen. That's why people erroneously just go and carry a name after baptism. Oh, your name is, what's your name? Tosin. Just, oh, my name is, is Victory too. And you know, wonderful, but you just call your name a carnal name. You are strolling to the swimming pool and they said, make sure you have a name. What name do we put there? Just say John or James. And you find out, no, there was a man sent from God, but the name was given. I'm sure that the father would have called him something, but the angel said, no, 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 no. Something had been concluded from heaven. The name that opens this man's destiny is called John. He said, no, no, no. He shut his mouth until he revealed to the wife. So when you see certain things, you will just see that God says, a woman shall arise in a generation and she shall be called a helper. You may not know what it means. You will start thinking, it's not, it may be you, but you never know you are the one until the season comes when you enter this marvelous light the body of knowledge allocated for whoever should walk in it then you will find out that you will open it and all of a sudden grace 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 just opens you up the name joshua was not given to me by my father the name joshua was given to me by god my biological father and mother did not call me Joshua. Our ignorance in the spirit has costed us a lot of things. 
you shall call him Emmanuel. Jesus comes. I thought somebody would say, Ah, oh God, make sure, make sure you don't miss out. Your name is Emmanuel. No. When the angel now comes, that Emmanuel was a code. The same angel said, You shall call him Jesus. When the, the man, blind Bartimaeus, when he saw him, he cried, Thou son of David. Is the son of David Jesus? What, who is the son of David? Son of David is Solomon. So was the man not calling Solomon? Solomon, help me. He said, no. That was a wise man. The son of David is Solomon. Why didn't Jesus say you are lying? Solomon has gone to be with the Lord. No. Thou son of David. The one who sits on the throne spiritually. Are, we, are you hearing what I'm saying? So there are things written in this Bible. I searched the Bible to find out the program of God. But I searched the Bible too looking. Lord, you, it can't just be koinonia. This is not just Zaria. There is something prophetic. Show me. Where is it? Where is it? It's not just about this. Show me. Many of you just sit down and find a nice scripture. You shall build houses. You shall repair the former desolations. Amen. Of course, prophetically is applied to you. But let me tell you, there is something with your name on it. That you can get up and know that this is my meat to do and finish what was written. I don't know if it's so for everybody. But there are people. One of the things that happens to men when they truly encounter God is that something happens to their name. What is your name? Not what do you want? Jacob, the problem with you has to do with your name. What is your name? Have you been given a name from the Spirit? And he said, no, my name is Jacob. See, I don't care whether his name was, his name was goodness. The name would still have been changed. It's not because he's a cheat and a supplanter. No. Selman means the way to love. Is that not a nice name? Who would not want to give a child a nice name like that? God said, what are you talking about? Let's talk about destiny. Destiny. You carry the name. You carry the office. You carry the crown. You carry the scepter. Every man of God that has ever prophesied to me that didn't know my name never call me my biological name never not once i remember one time i met a dear man of god he's now a dear friend somewhere and he was speaking and he looked at me. in fact not even i remember a time i think we we're going to was it been a republic I, I i think i can't remember now been a republic for a program and we were there you know all these guys that use divination that can stand in the market and start prophesying to you remember they were trying to clear our, uh, our passport at, at customs and all of that and then i stood close and he looked at me and said joshua he said you see this guy he has seen something in the spirit read your bible jesus was the man because there was no power in that name no there was no power in that name j-e-s-u-s -S. no 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 you call him jesus say, how are you there's food for you so you will be surprised that many of you have been having dreams and in those dreams certain names are called you by spiritual forces they call you names and you think maybe they are talking about bible actors somewhere why are you God, is it that you don't know my name i will never forget one time i was having a dream very prophetic dream um i think i wrote it i can't remember i can't i can't even pronounce it well it was a name that was called and it was an angel of the lord who was calling god a name i checked the bible i didn't find that name anywhere but it was a name like tongues a long name ah, what is this i wrote i thought it was greek I'm, and let me tell you i studied the bible very very well i'm not a lazy person 
I checked it, checked lexicon, checked everything. I just saw some nonsense started coming out, part rubbish, some of these zodiac things. I said, no, 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 no. I checked it very well. I said, but what is this name? Very long name that was called. If someone introduces that name now, that person is going to be in trouble. What name? Which one? He is called what? What name? No. But the Bible says there is a marvelous light allocated for a generation. We thank God for what they did. The goal of studying the Bible is not just to stop there. The goal of studying the Bible is to understand God's character and by His Spirit continue. Continue. What we are living now is being recorded in heaven. It will be read and there are people who will learn from it it's not just because there is no spiritual archaeology right no 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 in the heavens one day you will read there are gifts of the spirit you see operate here you may not find them exactly you can just relate them with one that is close to them i told you the gifts of the spirit are not nine they are as unlimited as the spirit himself theologically and for the purpose of of spiritual administration we focus there but there are not nine gifts of the spirit there are dimensions that the evil in this day requires the evil in the then day did not require some of these dimensions so they were sealed and left for our generation are we together the level of deception in our generation is too high there are other gifts that must be opened people go for war and they hide different sets of weapons based on the attack there are times that when the aggression gets bad they now they're all nations of the world have certain weapons that no other nation has seen every some are hiding it in the sea some are hiding it somewhere when the going gets tough then they will bring out those arsenals that's how it is spiritually why am i saying this to us listen carefully you will find yourself walking in very deep spiritual dimensions that if you are not guided you may think it is occult or it is witchcraft and you will throw away the dealings of the spirit just because it is strange now you must be guided don't get me wrong don't double into all kinds of spiritual things and destroy yourself but many people have just camped around the stories of the past wonderful but brothers and sisters there is what god is doing and the bible says that we are a chosen generation we are a royal priesthood a holy nation hold on who was saying this who was saying this huh do you know who was saying this 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 was peter the apostle saying but ye who was he talking to that means he was not there but you read it now did you learn it didn't say but we but you the people i'm talking to you are a chosen generation i'm not in your generation revelations let's go to the bible let's go to the bible revelation chapter 5 revelation chapter 5 please sit down revelation chapter 5 is god helping us tonight see sometimes god just disorganizes me like this revelation chapter 5 let me show you something <laughs> let's read from verse 8 from verse 8 to 10 now look at this and when he had taken the book the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb so the four living creatures 24 elders are we together the bible says they fell down before who the lamb having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors which are the prayers of the saints verse 9 and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open his seals for thou was slain and had redeemed the word us there is an error the 24 elders and the four living creatures are not part of the redeemed the word there is redeem them unto god by thy blood out of every kindred talking about inhabitants on the earth out of every tongue and people and nation verse 10 
and has made them not us you see the mistake again in translation and has made them unto our god kings and priests and they shall reign the 24 elders don't reign on earth come on now talk to me the four living creatures don't reign on earth they are in the throne room they minister to god translators messed up some of these things and if you don't read by the spirit you will just gather all kinds of things the bible says we have been made unto our god kings and priests and the domain of our legislation is on earth that we shall reign on earth now watch this imagine imagine with me that one of the 24 elders was reading this thing of course you would know it's not them it can't be talking about them and they'll be wondering what generation because they themselves don't know everything nobody in heaven knows everything except god they see in parts too and so they'll be wondering ah, which generation is this going to be fulfilled in and all of a sudden a generation comes brothers and sisters listen let me tell you there are things that will happen in our generation that have not happened before they will not be error because they have been written it is whatever was not prophesied and is done that is error you see that that it has not been done doesn't mean it has not been said there are things that will happen the coming of jesus has not happened everyone who wrote it has gone to be with the lord and yet it has not happened but we know and nobody will argue that it will happen because it has been prophesied so also like the coming of jesus there are many other things that are being written but they were written in coded forms you have to be brought in permit me to use the word like occult you must be ushered in like the freemason call or the illuminati they can call you and say look we want you to become part of this brotherhood to give you access to certain things god has said i have kept this dimension for a generation that means no matter how many times abraham fasted he never would have entered certain things we are not entering it today just because we fasted more or we prayed more there's a place for spiritual discipline but that our generation has been chosen say chosen that's the word chosen chosen it's an election of grace that god decided by his predetermined counsel that in a dispensation there will be a people who will be opened other doors and they will see these lights and have access to a dimension of god and reveal to a generation this is what makes us royal priesthood peculiar people a holy nation called out the same way god called israel out and showed israel something no other hedonistic nation could see it was that light it is being called into light that shows that you are peculiar are we together now we have been called we have been called i tell myself i am so privileged to see and to know the things that i know sometimes i read the bible and i'm not reading a storybook in all honesty and without any sense of pride i read and i say but if i were not apostle joshua selman i would still say this guy whoever they were talking about here this guy must be joshua selman now some ignorant fellow will now come and start saying that this guy is claiming he's the messiah no that, that's not what we're talking about it is finding the scripture about your destiny that opens you up you see when you see a man walking in some results of result there are forces some dimensions of result there are spiritual forces that back up this operation they don't just happen just like that you check your bible you will find Reinhard Bonke there. You check your Bible, you will find Benihim there. You check your Bible, you will find Bin Laden there. You check your Bible, you will find ISIS there. They are all coded. The people who did this thing found it. They found it. By divination, some of them were called into the inner courts of the spirit and were told, this is your destiny. You will be an agent of destruction. And he said, really? There are some presidents and governors now that have been ushered by extraterrestrial beings into the archives of the spirit. See your destiny. This is what you will carry. 
and from birth they move them like that why do you think some of these royal families take time to choose a wife and a husband you come and say you like them they say go away they go and bring out old books and check and call some people and say no the wife should come from so 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 family it was prophesied already that whoever will marry prince this or prince that must be from this family they now start finding where that lineage went to and now check and say ah you are from this family do you have a daughter yes where is she and the naive girl is sitting they say congratulations I say what I say just come she thinks she's going no she's something was written about her listen to what i'm teaching you what i'm teaching you is a very deep mystery in the spirit but it's true are we together lo i come as it is written of me in the volume volume one volume two volume three to do thy will it is written of me joshua selman all oh, great things have i spoken of you O zion something is written something you have been reading what is written about others and applying it by faith prophetically yes but there must be something you will find written about you that a jimmy for this purpose i brought you for this time for this and that and that day you stand and you are no longer reading the bible you are reading you so it is true that i will be a deliverer so it is true that one day this will happen jesus read that he was going to die so when he saw death he did not run away it was part of his assignment he knew god will be so dull to allow major events happen on earth without capturing them here no no a man causing global harvest for the kingdom reinhard bonke and you believe that all he's doing was just an application of what paul did no sir no sir let's have spiritual intelligence let me tell you this some of you your being in zaria now has nothing to do with your wish it's prophecy it was prophesied scenes whether you are aware or not is not the issue this gentleman came from accra ghana he's been around until one day you will check the archives of prophecy whether written in the bible or revealed by the spirit and you will see that god said at this time so 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 person would be here because after such and such a time he will encounter an anointing and he will start something so for that to happen god made sure no other university gave you admission you applied them um, if uh, you applied everywhere but if if they gave you admission there it would jeopardize prophecy so you had to pay the price of five years so that you would be there you see that i would be the last person to believe i should be in zaria by this time what will i be doing here for God's sake. But prophecy. Zaria, me, doing what? Haba. Prophecy. One day you will meet one old woman in Zaria somewhere who used to love God in the 80s. She will say, my son, come. Let me show you something God told me when I was 22. Behold, a young man will arise from this soil. You will see. That's what she will tell you. And say, God revealed to me that a time will come, a move of God will start in Zaria. I'm now 81. When I was 17, I said, Lord, when will it happen? And then all of a sudden, a young boy is moving around and the hand of God is trailing him. There are many of you seated here. Do you know why your life is unusual? Because this thing, a verse in scripture has been looking for you and it will never stop until you are found. A verse in scripture. This Bible you see is a gateway, is a portal. It's not a magic book. It's not just about climbing scripture. There's something that has been written about you. Mighty in this world. Mighty in this world. 
generation perish because you will obstruct prophecy just one carelessness leaving a region when you should not leave alone will destroy your life listen listen to me we are talking prophecy here let me suspend my teaching for tonight for next week but let's just flow with what the spirit is doing listen to me you see a spiritual man is not an ordinary man a spiritual man is governed by many factors the spirit but also governed by the truth everything on earth is like a football playing everybody there is something if a genie does not do a whole generation will perish if god is merciful then god will raise a replacement but that replacement must arise otherwise some things will not be done there is something if pastor alpha does not do in Kogi state that state like this as a territory may never enter certain dimensions it's not just about looking for ministry it's prophecy that you have found it this is my contribution to the coming of christ this is what the prophet when isaiah was seeing many things i was part of what he saw this is it this is it let me tell you this hold on there are some of you ladies your assignment on earth is to give birth that's it not to preach your assignment is your room this room you are seeing your assignment there is somebody that has been prophesied that must come out through your room if it's another room something will be wrong it must be your room mighty on your mighty on your Mighty on my life, mighty on my life, mighty on my life, mighty on my life. Listen, I want you listen carefully. I know that it's true that we say no man is indispensable. It is true. But let me tell you this. There are men who they are not aligning can cost a generation 30 extra years. Just one person. God will find another replacement, but it will never be the way it would have been. If I didn't answer the call of God upon my life, God's purposes will still be moved. But there are people born again today who will never meet Christ. Their children will never find God. There is a dimension just like you.
there is something you are not just coming for let me tell you this if you ever find yourself in koinonia that you came alone you will need to see the spiritual forces you fought this place is a place of birthing are you getting what i'm saying it's like a place of spiritual registration you are answering present they have been calling you where are you john john and the spirit of god says come and you come and say present i'm here i'm here where did you come from acquire bomb now come there is an allocation for you it may not look like it now but let me tell you brothers and sisters it may not look like it but believe me believe me there is a place written for you my dear sister don't let marriage issue kill you there is something here that's why god is meticulous about you a guy will come god is saying yes to everybody and god will tell the guy get out of this place and it's not like he hates him there is prophecy that wind is not your own no. it's for a generation listen i want you to go back and trace the story of how you came to zaria and trace the story of how you got koinonia message it's a miracle it has to be an angel no 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 it's in, it's in, it has to be spiritual when you find out that's when you see that so this is what was happening so i am this important brothers and sisters hear me what happened was that there was a blast from heaven and all those who must be relevant in god's program not only through koinonia wherever you are if that trumpet sounds i tell you you must come where it is not whether you want to you can be doing your thing and god said let's go let's go quickly and let me build you sometimes you see listen god acts as if he doesn't pity you no he's looking at the generation that are dependent on your obedience and he said not even your yes will make me stop because a woman's destiny is tied to your revealing this dimension of god listen listen let me find somewhere and i just feel let's pray first peter 2 and verse 5 i was actually going to talk about kings and priests the concept of royal priesthood we'll, we'll take that next week but let me just take just one of the aspects first peter chapter 2 and verse 5 one of the primary roles of priesthood the bible says is to offer he say ye also as lively stones listen carefully are being built up into what a spiritual house the house of god the gates of heaven a connection to the heavens you are being built you are what a holy priesthood what is your assignment to offer up spiritual sacrifices listen spiritual sacrifices are many things the constraints that you must go through so that god will be birthed in a generation is a spiritual sacrifice it takes only priesthood to make that happen when i push you people to pray to fast you are being built there is there is a sacrifice like a woman is about to give birth and he said madam eat well be strong because you will need to push the bible says as priests our assignment among others is there is a spiritual sacrifice there is a dimension of god it will take a heavy sacrifice to reveal you must be built built up into that house it says to offer up some of you that sacrifices your body to offer it up some of you that sacrifices your worship some of you that sacrifices your ambition some of you that sacrifices your destiny some of you that sacrifices your certificate that you labored went to school you want to get a job and god says no you will need to lay down that certificate you must be built otherwise your sacrifice cannot be acceptable to offer up you are lively stones you are part of a building hear me koinonia you are part of a building you may be a first timer that just told and say wow god see these guys you are using god is saying that you were here you are also part of those stones 
We have been looking for you. Where were you? We are supposed to be putting lintel now. But by now you should have entered a dimension. And you are just getting born again. Anyway, hurry up. Hurry up because there is a space for you in that building. You have delayed the building because you refuse to get born again fast. When God is saying, let me use you. The devil is there wasting your time. And now you see that there is a space for you. How dare you look down on God's people and think it's just only one guy called of God. No, sir. No, sir. You may not look like it now. Every one of these people you see, you think that they are serving Joshua Selman. They are lively stones. There is a part in this building. I know we say it prophetically, all of us are contributors. We don't know what we are saying. It is true. There is something if Ejimi does not release to this generation, God will appear and say, Ejimi, why? Look at He will show you a vision of the woman dying. He will show you a vision of another family and said, all this were tied to your obedience. There are some of you ladies here, you don't want to marry, but God will look at you and say, you must marry. Say, Lord, I don't want. He said, then you are selfish because there is a child from your womb who will anoint a child from another woman's womb who will be the one to take over the children and that other child has been born but your own womb is not just about having children listen listen you see why some people are barren this is what satan is stopping barrenness is not just a, a demon no satan has already seen the program from here okay some child will give birth to this oh Sam's child and Pastor Alpha's child. So they are the ones who will preach in that crusade. Okay, stop Pastor Alpha from having a child. So that the program, Satan does not stop everybody. He's selecting. He's not stupid. He's looking at people who will make a major stoppage. So some of you can just sit down and find out that you got born again. And when others get born again, they are happy. Miracle alert. But you got born again and for one year is warfare. Satan is saying, this is a big blow to the kingdom. Why did promise get born again? By now you would have remained somewhere. Ha, what do we do to promise now? Okay, let's make sure his wife is not born again. Or let's make sure she's barren. I told God something. I said, Lord, everything I represent to my generation, everything that was written about me, there are many other people, but there is a role. And I will play that role in life and death. Some of you here, listen to me. This thing tonight is a call by the Spirit. God is saying, look, son, daughter, because of you, something is not happening. There are songs that you guys are supposed to bring you have been doing music training wonderful but sit down and say lord what are the songs for this generation what are the songs speak to me not just to teach people how to play keyboard and guitar sit down what are the songs what are the songs miriam wrote a song i will sing unto the lord for he has triumphed gloriously miriam wrote it today we sing it as a song of victory we must write something that our children will read. Look at these little children. There is a heritage we must leave for them. That heritage is called a spiritual sacrifice. You will pray where you don't need to pray. You will fast when you shouldn't. It will pain you. But every time you want to give up, you will remember something was written about me. If Anna the prophetess did not pray, Jesus would not come home. Her assignment... How can a woman's assignment be to pray and fast for, for 60 years? I was born. Madam, what is your assignment? To pray for who? There's a young boy I always see in a vision. And God said, I called you to pray in the temple till he comes. Mary, what is your assignment on earth? A ghost told me I would give birth to a son. Is that all? How about my, madam, you are a smart lady. But that's what he told me. If Mary gave birth to any other child aside from Jesus, she would still not be featured in the program of God. Listen to me. In this season, not everything is important to God. 
you have to find out this present truth what is God saying about my life why am I like this why the attacks at the center of it all it's you that I see it's you that I see all these sacrifices Lord, at the center of it all, it's you that I see, it's you that I see. So there is power in your name, name that is above me, miracle. Listen, I'm going to give you the next 10 minutes. Huh? We are going to pray. And the prayer, listen to me. The prayer is, Lord, yes to your will. Listen, many of us think the call is a call to be a, a preacher or a preacher's wife. That's foolish thinking. The call is, God is saying, is a relay. You have been delaying people. People are standing. Lord, yes to it. Yes to it. Lift your mouth, open your mouth, blast in tongues, and say, Lord, yes, 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 yes to the prophecy that was written about me. Yes, yes, as a kingdom financier, yes, yes, as an apostle of the Lamb, yes, yes, as a prophet to the nations. Yes, as a mother in Israel. Everybody pray. Lo, I come. In the volume of the book. It is written of me. It is written of me, Joshua Selman. It is written of you. My parents may not have known it. My siblings may not have known it. But there is prophecy upon my life. Relevant to the move of God. Within a generation appointed to be a partaker of the marvelous life. Chosen. Chosen. Literally. Chosen and picked by the wisdom of God. Let me tell you this let me tell you this when you find what was written about you you see let me say this look at me many of us here you are going to find out things that were written about you that may not be major like paul was teaching about um, i think it was in first corinthians 12 he was talking about 14, 12, 13, 14. He was talking about the members of the body. Let me balance something here. Some of you are going to discover that the role you have to play in the kingdom may not be as vocal as being the president of a ministry or heading a ministry. And you will allow flesh. Listen, please listen. Everyone listen. You will allow flesh intimidate you. To mean just because God has called Joshua Selman to head a ministry. 
let me tell you this i want to show you a secret i'm already i'm already touching my teachings of some months i have a teaching that i'm going to bring here called the mystery of the veil it's a revelation god showed me the veil do you know why the bride in ancient times used the veil because everything glorious is covered the more a thing is in hiding the more the glory that's why the father hides in light listen there is a relationship between glory and the veil are you seeing that now so the parts of your body that we cannot see are the parts that make what we can see work so if you find out that as part of the body you are occupying a position that is not visible it's not a thing to cry it means you carry a higher weight of glory listen yes when please help help when 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 rebecca was brought to be a wife to isaac listen this is a bride on her way going the moment she saw isaac she failed herself i'm a woman of glory she failed herself so your heart you may never see it but let your heart stop working and all your hands do you know all the parts that take people to the hospital are parts they cannot see you just see that the hand is no longer working the leg is not working you go and meet a doctor and say doctor what is wrong they say ah this guy has diabetes just because of something going on inside when you are sick even if they rub something on your hand it's just it is the one you swallow that goes in that you cannot see is the one responsible for your vitality listen i just felt like ministering is some of us our ministry is behind the veil and because of that you may feel very left out there are many ladies you want to be in front there are many guys you want to be in front the greater honor is when you are hiding are you getting that now yes the greater honor your blood vessels hiding your blood itself hiding yes that's what carries every other thing to your body are we together but i can see the hand i can see the mouth so you will think the mouth is so important let the heart stop pumping and that's when you will see so there are some of you god is going to call you to ministries that are behind the veil you may be in koinonia you may be anywhere else and you find out that just because i'm a member of the worship team i'm not in ministry is them apostle you are wrong you are even the stronger part some of you are quietly in prayer band 12 o'clock every night you pray for me and you may never think it's a ministry stop praying for me and you will see the attacks on my life that's when you will know that you are more glorious than even me holding the mic have you learned something tonight let me tell you this it's a big secret i learned if you want to be relevant to a generation ah huh, let a majority of your life be hidden if all of you is seen by everybody you are not strong you are not powerful no all your revelation all your rema all your finance oh no a greater part of your life should be hidden look at god god hides in light no man sees him jesus came on earth just three years and he left but many of us are see me i want to be the, the no the happening people are usually the ones that are not even the strongest believe me the electricity that powers this you cannot see it but that is what is moving the fan you are only seeing the fan but there is the electricity some of you are like that so in finding your place let the devil not deceive some of you to just say kai i'm touched by this message i must go and pioneer a ministry or pioneer this and destroy yourself some of you may be in hiding that you are a pastor or that you are marrying a pastor doesn't mean you must be a preacher there is a difference between a pastor and a preacher there is a difference between a pastor's wife and a preacher that you can be a prophet or a prophetess it doesn't mean you are a preacher anna the prophetess was an intercessor 60 60 years or 64 years abraham was a prophet moses was a prophet father show me 
my place in your program. Open my eyes to see it. Open your mouth and pray. Show me my place. Pray. Show me my place in your prophetic blueprint. In this season, show me. Show me. Show me my place. going to pray and say father what sacrifice must i make for this grace to speak in my generation some of you the sacrifice is that you will not marry the person you want to marry some of you the sacrifice is you will have only one child that's the sacrifice some of you the sacrifice is you will have seven children you plan for two but god will say seven because the sixth child is the prophet and so God will say you can't stop some of you the sacrifice is night prayers must continue till Jesus comes some of you the sacrifice is you must be rich you can't be poor the sacrifice is your wealth for some of you the sacrifice is the anointing you must pay till you find power you must pay till you find power you can't do ministry no 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 you must pay till you find power that's the sacrifice for some of you is utterance you must stay till the spirit of revelation enters you lord i'm willing to make the sacrifice i receive grace open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray i don't know what it will cost me but oh god of heaven i am ready in life has to be to reveal the power of God no matter how people criticize you if you rob your generation of that dimension then God will never be glorified are we together hear me there are some of you the family you came from that you are not proud of oh my father is an iron bender my womb, my mother sells akara in the market no that spiritual G was a combination needed for your destiny. Are you getting what I'm saying now? You may not know 
that akarasela that you are not proud of and that that man that you think is just maybe an iron bender i'm not proud of him something came from two of them that is necessary for your grace that background if you came out from any other background aside from that you will never believe what i'm telling you now so god took you some of you are from families that there is no father no mother there is a reason for everything listen when you bring the prophetic dimension of life everything suddenly makes sense i see i see why i'm the only boy in my family i see why i'm the only lady i see why god allowed all my siblings to grow and then i later came as last born if i was born in the same age range they would never allow me to serve god i now see the wisdom of god that's why the bible says my ways are higher than your ways you may not know why it's happening there are some of you you would have graduated now but you went and you saw an extra year and god is saying stay god may not have been the one that caused it but he can use it for his glory if you if you travel you probably would have married somebody now and giving birth to a man not giving birth to that prophet and it is in your staying remember listen it was so ordained that a woman would be the first to see jesus at resurrection because women are gates but the bible says all the other disciples came and when they looked they ran away out of fear but a woman came when she looked she stayed there it is her patience she refused to go as she stayed and stayed and stayed suddenly she saw a man you see that the angels came what is all this there is power in waiting be careful breakthrough is not rush don't compare yourself with other people you will be foolish i don't know who i'm speaking to but god is speaking to someone don't rush your life other people have cars i must have car or mm -mm, mm -mm. be prophetic in your approach to life there is destiny upon your inside there is a reason why joseph had to be a carpenter to be the earthly father of jesus there is a reason why mary had to be a virgin it's not an insult on other women who are not virgins but there was there was a reason there was a reason why it was not just mary's womb anywhere jesus was kept had to be virgin the donkey he would climb the tomb he would stay it was not about mary it's a principle because he had to be first born among the begotten and the first born is the one who opens up things anything if anybody ever came out through the womb of mary jesus could not be the first born Are we together? This is my prayer all the time. I don't live a foolish life. I live a life that is prophetic. I have found where it has been written. When you find this, no matter who persecutes you, no matter what devil comes from where, you just look and say, you, you are entitled to your opinion that is a derivative of foolish perception that is not kingdom. But when you look at it here, you will now see some of you will now see why you have been in Zaria. Lord, why am I here and God will not answer you? Just stay. That's the answer. Lord, let me also enjoy the common sense of living a useful life. And God says, just do what I'm telling you. Stay. Your staying too is an assignment. It takes sacrifice to do every one of these things that you see brothers and sisters but when you know that you owe a generation a dimension of god it constrains you some of you see a jimmy here training people and helping people to be wealthy there are people who can just look and say ah this guy likes money it's a burden it's ministry there is a generation that needs it you see why we're particular and all these are doctors because we don't just want people who give people injection and prescribe drugs if that's all you do with your life then you are not very useful to the earth because there are many of you already 
but when you find your place in life there are people when we give back to we rejoice because of what happened listen let me advise people here if you are pregnant here or you have given birth stay with god to name your child don't get up this this these names we give children that are a product of carnality sometimes people are drinking beer and then somebody somewhere you don't need to call anybody in the village to say what is the name of my child they can suggest stay with god and find out what is the destiny of this child don't say i've always liked james what are you saying we have destroyed the lives of people some of you are carrying names today that frustrated your destinies like jabez because it was not from the bowels of the spirit that those names were given satan made sure that he changed your destiny by changing your name are we together i may not advise you to go and change your name but let me tell you sincerely 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 names are spiritual names are spiritual saul in the new testament after the resurrection still his name was changed to paul why didn't they say former Saul? Paul, the apostle of the Lamb. Names are so important, the foundation of heaven is made with names. Twelve names make up the foundation of heaven, not your house. So your name can serve as a foundation of your life. Nonsense, demonic names that have attracted trouble to people. The Bible says Jabez. Jabez was angry. The mother named him in sorrow. The guy got up, an innocent person, trouble from the left and right. I told you about a gentleman who the mom cursed him. She gave him a name. She may not call him a name, but she told him that until rat stops stealing, he will never stop stealing. That's a name. A name is not, it's a system of identification. Give him a name. That guy will come out of prison now. Just they will advise him. He will sit down. They will counsel him. Two weeks he's back. Because a name. If God helps that guy. And he encounters a true apostolic and prophetic ministry. And that embargo is lifted in his life. It's not. That's, that's how he will remain. He will give birth to a child. The child will carry the name. When these things leave people. They don't leave the earth. They still wait for violators and come upon them. The leprosy of Naaman. It left Naaman, but he was still there. And Gehazi made himself through greed as a scapegoat. He came and said, Calm down, please. My master just made up his mind. There's, there's something. Can you give me? I said, oh, No, no, no. Why not? While he was giving the leprosy, he was hearing, Go to this man and his generation. And a prophet confirmed it. Look at how a stupid man enslaved his generation because of greed. Do you not know that the sacrifices that you make today is not just for you? It's not just for your children. Listen to me. It's not just for your children's children. When God says, young man, for the next 20 years of your life, make sure every night you are praying. Oh God, what is it for? When God is saying that, he's looking at your 18-year-old son. And an encounter that we need to come to that child and he says continue to pray it it may not make sense but continue some of our parents prayed non-stop for 25 years for some of you to be here is that true they prayed every night no matter how tired you are sleeping you hear mama praying oh god use my children you are snoring away your destiny your mother prayed some of them they prayed till they died that's the prayer you hear god is changing your name to start an order our generation shall praise your name our generation shall praise your name our generation shall praise your name our generation shall praise your name. 
Father, tonight, you have dealt with us in such a dimension that we are grateful. Lord, I know you are building us. There is something you are doing in us. We may look ordinary, but there is not only destiny upon our lives, there is prophecy. Something was written in the Bible that addresses us directly. And Lord, we vow a vow as a generation that we will not fail you. We vow. We will arise and fulfill our destiny. We will arise and recover all that was lost. Let us arise in mighty victory. We will arise. Yes, we will arise. I will arise and fulfill the prophecy. I will arise. And recover all that was lost. I will arise in mighty victory. I will arise. Yes, I'll arise. I will arise. Yes, I'll arise. There are friends God is asking some of us to leave Not because they are bad But because they are an interruption to prophecy You must let them go There are relationships God is asking some of us to leave Not because they are bad But they are an interruption to prophecy Listen carefully. I'm rounding up. There are geographic locations God is speaking to for some of us. Not because he's bad, but because it's an interruption to prophecy. Your priesthood demands that you make spiritual sacrifices. Listen to me. Some of you are crying. I see people crying. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed of your tears. It is costly to carry the glory it is costly to carry Shekinah I can tell you this first hand I am a student in the school of sacrifice I know what sacrifice is your time your life your energy yes. you are never we are rounding up. I want you to listen to me, especially those of you outside. Anything valuable comes at a cost. My brother, my sister, listen to me. It will never be at a platter of gold. No. You will not carry a financial mantle at a platter of gold. No. You will not carry a true anointing for a generation, not for a service, not for a program not for a convention the mantle for a generation <laughs> some of you it will cost you your nutrition and your dieting yeah. you will fast till you fast your life out but it's a sacrifice for some of you it will cost you the cost will be loneliness because it's calling you to be a seer you will not be a public figure For some of you, the call upon your life, listen carefully, the prophetic call is not something that you just sit down prophesying names and numbers. There is a spiritual sacrifice. Let me tell you, I say it with all humility. This man you see standing has blood dripping from him, 
from the left and the right. This anointing you see doesn't just happen just because a man loves God. Don't just admire power until you see what is behind the veil. Are we together? You don't just talk and people are falling down like that. People are not idiots. This is not going to listen to a man's message. It's not just going to YouTube or getting messages and listening. And, no, 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 no. Sacrifice. Many preachers will tell you, listen, we're rounding up. Many preachers will tell you it doesn't matter. It matters. It matters. This is a realm and a dimension I'm walking in. I can tell you how to get there. Take sacrifice. Your night will have to be turned to an altar if it's power you want. You will need to learn when to turn the plate upside down. Even at your own sacrifice. If your belly is your God, you have, you have, you have prostituted away the opportunity for power. Hallelujah. You will hardly see me moving around on this. You think, listen, I'm a human being. I have a life. Sometimes I want to stroll around too, just like others. And go and be happy. Sometimes I want to move around too. And enjoy life like others. But the call, but the prophecy, but the assignment. It's not because I'm a public figure, no. Sometimes I also want to go on vacation. Am I not a human being? Can't I honestly go on vacation and go and rest? It's the sacrifice. We're going to pray one last prayer. But I'm opening our eyes. Some of us have just been admiring, anointing and ministry. I'm opening your eyes to see. Brothers and sisters, it's a sacrifice. I want to marry a man of God. I want to marry a man of God. It's a sacrifice. It's not just mama or, or anointing or whatever. Nice surrender. Sacrifice. That's the language of kings in this kingdom. Whatever you ask of me. I surrender. Turn it into a prayer. And let's pray this song. Whatever you want from me. Whatever you ask me. I surrender. My reputation, my life, everything.
Father, what do we have that was not given? For a man can receive nothing except it be given to him. You gave us life. You gave us destinies. Lord, tonight you have moved upon us seeking, seeking to have more of us that we occupy that position of priesthood in the spirit. And Lord, there is a demand upon us in this season that we offer up spiritual sacrifices. Like an evening oblation, we lift it up, we cry, we cry. That not only the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart, but our sacrifices will rise like an incense to the heavens. That it will call for your mercy. That it will call for your power. That it will call for your presence. Build us, O oh God, like living stones to become a spiritual house. A spiritual house in experience. Grant us access to the light apportioned for our generation. The dimensions of you by the Spirit that we ought to know. That will be able to communicate spiritual realities in a higher dimension. A dimension higher, higher, higher than that of the saints of old. The Bible says, so that they without us, we are the perfection of your church. And so we cry as a bride longing for her husband. Even so, come. Maranatha, we call on the word. We call on that light. Come. Come to us. Come revelation. Come portals of the spirit. Come vistas of heaven. Come. Let heaven be opened over us in unusual dimensions even in this season. Lord, we truly want to be purposeful. We want to walk not just in our destinies, but upon the prophetic words revealed about us in scripture literally revealed about us show us oh god cause our eyes to see and that our hearts come into a point of understanding that we will walk in the path of destiny any decision oh god that we have made or are making that is out of sync with this prophecy we cry for the spirit of repentance let there be a realignment let there be a repentance let there be a readjustment in the name of jesus bring us to that point where we are accurate accurate in the path of prophecy lord once again we dedicate this house to you once again we dedicate everyone who is part of this ministry the thousands of people here on ground the thousands of others following, the millions who will access these teachings. Lord, that everyone who will hear this message, let there be a rumbling, let deep call unto deep. That years after today, may this message retain its freshness in the spirit. Let this message be a clarion call in the spirit. Let it be a shofar. In the name of Jesus, let it make a distinct sound in the spirit. And that everyone who is called by your name, a portion to be relevant in your program in this season, that as they hear this message, let something within their spirit cry out. Let this message be an instrument of revival for nations. In the name of Jesus, preserve the anointing that came tonight upon these teachings. And let everyone who hears this teaching carry the same grace. We bless you. Use us for your glory. In the name of of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ through the session tonight Jesus will be glorified I pray that you will walk wonders in our midst tonight in Jesus name amen God bless you please be seated it's my joy to be here thank you I love you too hallelujah praise the Lord Pastor Bolaji, thank you, sir. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. I appreciate you. Hallelujah. Um, I just want to squeeze in on every time that I have so that we can make progress. John chapter 16 from verse 13. Jesus was teaching just to buttress on what Pastor said before calling me up. 
He said, How be it when the Spirit of truth is come, He will guide you into all truth. He was stressing the necessity for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And truthfully speaking, it's not just a Pentecostal idea, it's not a denomination's idea. It is true that outside of the Holy Spirit, we are not worth much in ourselves. It is the Holy Spirit that adds the weightiness. It's the Holy Spirit that um, makes for our relevance. And it's important that we understand that outside of the Holy Spirit, the believer is not worth much. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that when the Holy Spirit comes, He will not only talk to you, He will guide you. That means you must be guided for truth to profit you. Just because there is truth does not mean you will profit from it. You must be guided. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, we'll discuss a few things. Um, and let's see, wherever we stop tonight, we'll just stop and walk with the time. And I thought in my heart what the Lord would have me share. And... Pastor, you know, I'm very careful over the things that I share. As a man of God, when you preach for a while, you always have something to say. But then it is important that your communication is that which the Lord desires for the moment. The Bible says, my heart is indicting a good matter. Yea, I speak of excellent things. Then it says, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Praise the Lord. That means we have to speak that which is consistent with God's counsel for it to be edifying. And the Lord put something in my heart that I think is very powerful and would help believers to mature and to help us to be able to rise to new dimensions. I'm teaching tonight very briefly on priesthood. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 19, priesthood. verse 9 verse 9 now please look up in scripture believers are called many things the bible has a very unique expression of god's idea about the believer the believer is called many things in scripture jesus himself teaching in what we call the beatitudes he called believers light he called believers salt Apostle John said, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we are called sons of God. The Bible calls us ambassadors. The Bible calls us many things. But then, the Bible also calls us kings and priests. Are we together now? There is a description of man, the believer, according to the image of Christ that is reflecting in him and there is the description of man according to his functionality when it has to do with functioning like Christ the Bible says we are kings and priests so Apostle Peter is teaching us something here and he says you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood or a priesthood of kings a holy nation peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light the bible tells us that we are kings and then it also says that there is the priesthood ministry of the believer now i'm interested in the priesthood ministry of the believer because it is very important and is the context of our discussion we are priests there is the ministry of priesthood according to scripture in revelation chapter 1 when you read from verse 4 to 6 revelation chapter 1 let's just look at a few scriptures and then i begin to build from there john to the seven churches which are in asia let's jump to verse 5 please the emphasis is verse 6 and from jesus who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood please read with me verse 6 together one to read 
and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. The Bible says he has made us kings and he has made us priests. Chapter 5 and verse 10. John is still receiving revelations in heaven. And the Bible says that we have been made kings and priests unto God and we shall reign on earth. Now this is very important because he tells us uh, that we are kings and priests. Then he now tells us the jurisdiction of our dominion. That the reality of our kingship and our priesthood should be exerted within this territory of God's kingdom. Are we together now? Very, very, very important. The priesthood of a believer is, is very important. Now I don't want to go into the theological... Um, exegesis of priesthood the kinds of priesthood and so on and so forth that's not the concern tonight i just want to draw up something and then we pray this is wine pressed hallelujah praise the lord most believers do not understand the responsibility that priesthood demands now please listen very carefully the principles of dominion and I just just while on my way coming I was just going through the theme for the year the prophetic word for the year and I said wow this is amazing um, we love to expand we love to think and speak dominion and that's powerful but there are principles that will make for the experience of the same and one of it is understanding priesthood our inability to understand the priesthood of a believer will keep us disadvantaged in spite of everything that has been wrought in Christ now I love God because this is a Bible believing church and this is a church that is theologically sound and and so I'm comfortable to share some of the things that I share I have I believe that I have pointed that here and is worthy of repetition that spiritual realities listen please spiritual realities are are twofold in their operation number one realities as from the standpoint of the Christ it is always finished because God does not work with time his realm is not even eternity eternity is time without end God's realm is light God's realm is now there is no tomorrow there is no later in God's realm everything is now now are we together now but in executing the will of God the men that receive that word from God his prophetic speakings are limited by time and there is a reason why God put us in time many reasons um, there's no time to do that teaching if there were no time there would not be a possibility for mercy and forgiveness because God tied his mercy to time the Bible says they are new every morning. Are we together now? <laughs> it's the reason why when the beings in the realm of the spirit default, there is no forgiveness. There is judgment straight up and they are bound in everlasting chains. So the saints have an advantage living in time. Are we together now? And so that, that, that itself already shows us that realities that are finished from God's realm must have a technology of finding expression within our domain. This is where the problem is for many believers because on one side we acknowledge God does not speak to men like he's speaking to men. He speaks to men like he's talking to himself. So God will talk to you as though the house were built. God talks to you as if your children are already saved. God talks to you as if the prosperity is already there. Because he's not lying. It is his reality. He can't pretend it. Are we together? There's no tomorrow. There's no later. So when God says, I will bless you, he's downgrading himself just for your understanding. In his realm, there is no later. Are you getting the point now? But now you come down to the realm of man. You have to understand the principles of transferring this spiritual reality to become your experience. If you lack this spiritual intelligence, you will continue to confess. You will continue to believe that is profitable. But your life may never capture that experience. Are we together? I'll give you an instance. The Bible says from the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. 
are we together now but jesus had to come in the flesh when he came to the earth he came as the word the logos of god who now became flesh are we together walked for 30 years learned the law became matured went to the cross and paid the price of sin in detail your sin was not casted by a word he went through a process that made his speaking become a reality as powerful as god was and is he did not cast sin out of man he had to go through the protocol that will make the remission of sin an experience are we together the bible says no inhabitant in zion shall say i am sick but then he continues to release graces upon people so that they will actualize that experience someone may be respectfully speaking maybe on a wheelchair or holding a crutch now in god's mind that is an anomaly for instance but it does not stop the fact that that is the person's experience here and now so he grants us access to his word and his spirit to superimpose the realities as seen from his realm this is what it means in the lord's prayer let it be done in earth as it is in heaven it's already a reality there but you must sustain an intelligence to make it true here and now so all that we teach i'm saying this because it's important to understand the context of communications like this they are not an attempt to sabotage the finished work of god of christ they are an attempt to partner with the holy spirit in the manifestation of those truths that have been finished forever O lord your word is settled not on earth in heaven is settled in heaven it will take this is why he gave us the holy spirit we would not need the holy spirit if there were no need to engage these truths to make it true in our lives are we together so the holy spirit was given to us the word of god was given to us pastors were given after god's heart all these systems to coordinate us to a point where we are strengthening our understanding colossians chapter 1 verse 9 apostle paul is praying and speaking over the church in Colossae that they they be filled with the knowledge of his will number one number two that they be filled with all wisdom and number three that they be filled with all spiritual understanding because when we are filled with these truths then they will help us to manifest to manifest to manifest these realities are we together so we're back to our teaching very quickly priesthood we're dealing with priesthood that the believer has a priesthood dimension and you will need the understanding of priesthood to make manifest everything that has been declared for as according to god's word very quickly i want us to look at just one of the duties of priest first peter chapter 2 please first peter chapter 2 my god verse 5 first peter chapter 2 and verse 5 everyone please read with me apostle peter is teaching us ready ye also as lively stones uh-huh are built up a spiritual house and a holy priesthood to do what to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god by jesus christ and so we see here that priesthood is tied to sacrifices that we have been made priests and that part of the jurisdiction of our priesthood ministry would require offering up sacrifices unto god this is very important are we together now and the primary listen very carefully the primary medium for offering the sacrifice of priesthood of the believer is prayer please write it down prayer the prayer ministry of the believer is one of the major dimensions of his operation as far as priesthood is concerned so prayer for the believer is not just an activity that has been endorsed by spiritual leaders it's not just um, a dimension that was demanded for from scripture it is more than an opportunity to petition god it is more than an opportunity to um, um, call for help from heaven priesthood is a ministry 
say unto Archippus that you take charge of the ministry that thou has received from the Lord that thou fulfill it so the prayer ministry of the believer is priesthood are we together now this is very very important The church has been on a season of fast and prayer and just feasting on the word. This is, this is an engineering to bring stability to our priesthood. So that through the ministry of fasting, the ministry of prayer and engaging the word, that every believer comes to a point where we are solid, we are stable and we are strong. This is a very, very noble pursuit and this happens year in, year out. Everybody say prayer. One more time, please say prayer. In Luke chapter 18 verse 1, just touch a few scriptures and then I just build and will pray. Jesus spake a parable, the Bible says, to the end that men ought always to pray. That means you are only exempted from prayer if you are not a man. Provided you are a man, prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is not for men of God. Prayer is for men. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 The Bible says pray without season. It doesn't mean pray from morning till night. It means be consistent. Be consistent in your prayer life. James 5 when you read from verse 13 down. The Bible says is any man afflicted. It says let him pray. Then the Bible says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much. Are we together? And then the Bible now uses a personality to personify the ministry of prayer. It says Elijah was a man of like passion and that he prayed earnestly over a space of three and a half years that there be no rain. And then there was no rain and he prayed again and rain came. That means there was nothing special as it were about Elijah except that when he stepped into that dimension of priesthood, he functioned like God. Are we together now? This is very, very important. Prayer is important. One time Jesus was with the disciples and having a conversation with Peter, he rebuked Peter and said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. He didn't say, I advised you. He didn't say, I counseled you. So instability is remedied by prayer. He has desired to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. He says, when you are converted, use this same strategy to strengthen your brethren. That means when you see them swaying, is proof that something is happening to their priesthood. You must get them back to the point where they pray that men ought always to pray and not to faint that men ought always to pray and not to faint that men ought always to pray and not to faint one of the dominion systems allocated for the saints is the ministry of prayer it's a principle of spiritual legislature god gave us authority listen very carefully over principalities and powers and so on and so forth listen a believer who does not pray will not be able to walk in the full expression of the counsel of god this is true for many reasons number one because god gave man a will this is very important one of the fundamental things there are seven fundamental things god gave man not a believer man as the zenith of his creation one of it is the power to choose are we together i said before you blessing and cursing life and death i only advise you i will not force you so god gave man the power to choose the power to choose mandates that you must always god cannot assume that you need his assistance god cannot assume that you need help god cannot assume that you need the intervention of heaven you must verbalize your request you must verbalize your need you invite god to your life on legal basis even salvation is not imparted outside of your will he loves you and he's made the way but he will allow your desire and your hunger to call upon him the lord is nigh them that call upon him not them that need him them that call upon him are we together please so the fact that god gave man a will he is ever ever respectful of that will i can choose to ignore god 
I can choose as an act of my volition that Lord I'm not interested in your program for my life and he will honor it at the expense of the eternal destiny of many God still allows them to declare their need for him there are people going to hell every day in spite of the fact that the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ is a done deal are we together this is very very powerful prayer is important your priesthood is important because it is the system that outsources strength from a dimension that is not earthly number two prayer is the highest proof of humility because it's proof that you acknowledge you are incapacitated in yourself prayerlessness is pride when people are prayerless it is because they have found a way to flatter themselves into believing that outside of god they are still sufficient apostle paul was teaching us and he says we do not claim to be sufficient in ourselves he said he said our sufficiency is of god who has made us abled ministers when i go to god in prayer is a declaration of humility is proof that i need him is proof that i'm not trivializing his relevance in my life hallelujah we must pray as proof of humility the third reason why we must pray is that prayer is a spiritual system of transporting realities from the realm of the spirit to this realm it's a dominion system it's a system of spiritual legislature paul was giving us the the revelation on how spiritual things happen in hebrews chapter 11 the bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for he calls it the evidence of things not seen are we still together he says for by it this faith this technology the elders obtained a good report and then verse 3 says through faith we understand that the cosmos the worlds were framed by the word of god okay now this is a technology so that things which are seen were not made of things which appear that means the mother that gives birth to the realm of the spirit or the physical realm is the realm of the spirit that everything that appears comes from a realm and a dimension that is higher than this realm listen believers please listen listen everything you need everything you imagine is only possible because it already exists what you call creation is only creation from this realm from the standpoint of the spirit is only transportation now this this is the basis upon which your faith is built so you are not hoping things will happen it's already a reality you only call it creation when it manifests in the earth realm but just because you have not seen it does not mean it does not exist the bible says why we look at the things which are seen or why we look not at the things which are seen but the things which are unseen unseen not unreal unseen just because your eyes cannot capture it in your space does not mean it's not there everything you are looking for is also looking for you there is a system to be able to transport it to your domain the ability to make what is far from you come to you is dominion are we together that the opportunity the open door the influence that is far from me i sustain an intelligence to compress time and bring it to myself now that's real dominion because everything we need for life and godliness has been provided for the bible did not say it was is within your domain but it's in the earth you must sustain the intelligence to draw things from wherever they are that was the morale of the miracle of the bones in ezekiel 37 it was a revelation to show you that the concept of distance is relative that there is a technology that can bring things that are apart and make sense of them are we blessed the principle of spiritual legislature that means i don't need to feel bad about what is not there there is an intelligence in the place of prayer i can call a helper in the place of prayer i can call opportunities i can create possibilities i can from the standpoint there it's true this is how the great rise 
it is vain to run away to pursue things individually you can coordinate them like a control room in the place of prayer knowing listen very carefully knowing that every physical thing every including men are only listen very carefully every physical thing in the earth is a reflection of what controls it are we together please let me have one person any one person at all come sir if this man comes to me to bless me hold this and give it to me if this man comes to me to bless me you think he just came he may even think he just came but the realm of the spirit says nobody just comes now listen very carefully it's impossible for him to just come because a body without a spirit is dead there must be an agency so i have sustained an advantage to manipulate possibilities to my domain without forcing them i can make this man bless me without manipulating him because i can talk to the father of spirits the father abba the owner the controller the manipulator of every spirit sit down are we together so this man comes he can leave and i don't feel sad because i can make him come again thy kingdom your influence favor lifting speed so in the place of prayer you coordinate these possibilities as though in a control room and you are there manipulating things and you come out and play life like a chess and you watch possibilities arrange themselves listen i'm not trying to motivate you this is priesthood the excellency the advantage of your being connected to the spirit is seen at the point of priesthood you define your possibilities hello him adonai thy kingdom come Thy will be done. Hello, him out of night. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hello, him out of night. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Listen. The priesthood ministry of the believer allows you to define the possibilities that you desire to be in your life you see the realm of the spirit is like an actor script that is unedited it takes your priesthood to choose which scenes you, you know how you act a film a movie there are all kinds of scenes at the point of acting but when the movie is released you don't see some scenes again prayer gives you the opportunity to select what must manifest in the realm of the spirit destruction is a possibility in the realm of the spirit speed is a possibility in the realm of the spirit delay is a possibility in prayer you have the opportunity to rise to a dimension and select the truths that are consistent with the character of scripture and allow this is what it means to bind and lose to allow for possibilities that must happen and it so happens that after a period of time if you do not select life was mandated to select for you and it's dangerous to outsource selection that is out of you will select things that you do not want to see priesthood hallelujah thank you sir the final reason i'll give it to you very quickly you won't believe that i've not even touched on what i want to share at all just no 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 we'll, we'll walk with time praise god now please look up the final reason why we must pray is found it's a very strange scripture that not many people um not many people look at first thessalonians chapter 2 please from verse 18 Paul was teaching the church in Thessalonica. He was showing them a very powerful mystery. Read it with me if you're a Christian. One, two, read, please. Uh-huh. One more time, please.
once and again meaning i tried and tried again wherefore your favor would have come to you he tried once and again but satan hindered us wherefore your testimony would have happened since last year march but once and again a system of resistance the bible is not silent as to the fact that we are not alone in this side of god's kingdom the bible is not silent as to the fact that there are operations of darkness that attempt to sabotage the liberty of the saints paul took time to give us a sound theological exegesis theologically speaking the book of ephesians is believed to be the zenith of paul's apostolic ministry and he showed us the the strategy to ward off the arsenals of darkness are we together now wherefore we would have come we would have come your breakthrough your lifting the manifestation of prophecy but Satan hindered us the Bible lets us know that Satan is not afraid to arise and challenge believers it is true from scripture that Satan is bold enough to challenge every word that God communicates to a believer. In fact, the Bible shows us the, the operation of Satan in a very instructive way. Jesus is done fasting. Look up please brothers and sisters. I think I've shared it here somewhere. Jesus is done fasting. And the first person he meets after his version of wine press is not his disciples, it's Satan satan is patient with jesus and after 40 days imagine the word the logos of god with the holy ghost in him and on him anointed without measure now prays to fast for 40 days this spiritual combination and the first person he sees is satan and satan is not shaking and falling under the anointing satan is standing in front of jesus and he's the first to broker a conversation Turn this stone to bread and the word is spoken. Now this is Rema and Satan does not fall. He does not run away. Now I'm not downplaying the power of God. I'm showing you something that will challenge you. What exactly is Satan afraid of? Because the word is there. The spirit is there. The anointing is there. Faith-filled utterances are there. And Satan is still standing. Then Satan takes it to another dimension. He holds the hand of Jesus and takes him to a high mountain. You are holding the word filled with the spirit and dragging him. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, him Adonai. Thy kingdom come. Listen to me. Everything good is why Satan will come to you. Satan has no business coming to you until he sees that the jealousy of God has been invested towards your destiny. He is looking for everything God wants. When God looks at you, he wants to know why. When God zooms his attention on your family, he wants to know why. Satan is threatened every time he sees the direction of god towards you i have loved you with an everlasting love i have drawn you with my loving kindness the moment jesus was born the spirit of the antichrist began to move through people to look for him to kill him he became uneasy the day a declaration came from heaven this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased hear ye him satan never looked for anybody again including barabbas he left Barabbas quietly because he was looking for a man who was a representation of God in the earth. Please listen to me very carefully. It is important to pray because it is at the point of priesthood that we, we establish victory experientially. Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 5. Paul was putting a very strong balance he was bringing the the psalm of david about man and he was teaching us something that we must understand for unto the angels are he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak verse 6 please 
but in a certain place he testified saying what is man that thou art mindful of him not the son of man that thou visitest him seven but thou hast made him lower than elohim the word there is elohim god himself not just angels thou crownest him with glory and honor listen and thou didst set him over the work of thy hands verse 8 thou hast put all things where in subjection under his feet for in that he put all things in subjection under him he left nothing this is the speakings of god you see how god speaks he left nothing that is not put under him but come back to this realm now we do not yet see all things reality is finished from god's standpoint but in experience we do not yet see it so priesthood becomes the bridge between prophecy and experience that that which is finished can find expression to become manifest hallelujah it is true that when you live your life barren of priesthood you may never never see in experience the salvation of god so jesus himself would get up early and go to pray the logos of god prayed the logos of god prayed he prayed every day he prayed every time even at his passion he prayed my house shall be called the house of prayer the house of priesthood not just the house of fellowship not just the house of teaching my house shall be called the house of prayer it was whilst the apostles prayed and fasted then the holy ghost spoke unto them and said separate me paul and barnabas we must pray because there are arsenals of darkness that continue to wage war against the victory of the saints and prayer becomes the platform to ward off these operations of darkness when you study the book of acts the bible tells us that one time james was beheaded herod beheaded james and it pleased the jews and then he caught peter and peter was kept he was bound hand in chain and then he was uh, there were all kinds of military people around but the bible says the church prayed the moment the church prayed the bible records that an angel came and when he came he tapped peter picked peter and begin and, and, and he began to walk him out until he got to the iron gates that led to the city and then peter was thinking he was in a vision until he got back prayer when done with understanding is powerful we're talking of priesthood here is god blessing anybody yes one day things will change is a joke it will take priesthood to manipulate possibilities and turn your night to day time does not change anything time only reveals it will take your insistence in fact here's how the bible puts it resist the devil resist the devil he will not flee because he wants to there is a resistance i desire to come to you once and again even i paul but satan hindered us i hate to be a bearer of bad news but just because prophecy comes does not mean it will manifest this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you war a good warfare with the prophecy with the prophecy with the prophecy the word of god has come upon my life this year that i am the head and not the tail i understand there is a devil somewhere who will want to take advantage of my background he will want to take advantage of the fact that my family is not connected to influential people to manipulate me but i stand in the position of priesthood to veto those disadvantages that's prayer that's priesthood many believers pray but few believers understand priesthood most of our prayers for many believers is just full of wise sayings and all kinds of things god why me that's not prayer are we together heaven helps those who um, help themselves that's that's not you see some of those things are very emotional things but they are, that's not prayer 
there are times that you will need to stand like Habakkuk and pray stand upon your watch set yourself upon the tower you can know when things begin to go in a way and manner that is not consistent with the character of the Christ that's not the time to discuss that's not the time to hope even if you don't know what is going on you filter the error you filter what is happening is in the place of prayer you will gain clarity the Bible says one time the apostle, listen very carefully, that the apostle had escaped from um, the island called Melita. Remember, he told the people there shall be no loss. And then the Bible says that the ship went and settled in an island called Melita. And when they came out because it was cold, they were trying to enjoy the fire. And the Bible says he was there with them and a viper. The viper was hiding, but it was the fire that made the viper come out. The viper was there in the log, but it was hiding. So when that prayer comes, it can mount pressure on the viper to reveal itself. The devil can be hiding around your finances, hiding around your family. It will take fire upon that wood to reveal the viper. Is God speaking to us? Priesthood. When believers do not understand this idea of priesthood they become weak they continue to hope that things will happen they continue to write down prophecies they continue to just mesmerize around prophecies and the word of god and it never gains ground men ought to pray and not to faint it is priesthood priesthood when you pray I need assistance from a realm and a dimension that is higher than the three-dimensional realm and you are able to call upon God and the Lord is nigh them that call upon him Jeremiah 33 and verse 3 says call unto me and I will answer I will answer not I will come I will answer in response to your call then I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know great and mighty things that you do not know when you pray things begin to shift in your life listen you an attack on your prayer life is a real attack listen very carefully it's an attack on your priesthood it's not just an attack on your spirituality it's an attack on your priesthood you will never be able to walk in the experience of dominion when you do not have a track record of prayer are we together yes spiritual legislature in the name of jesus i call for destiny help us in the name of jesus i declare my path is as a shining light it shines ever brighter this is priesthood you are in your room in the name of jesus i program january i program february no chances no excuses i program it I declare by the spirit of the living God the job is coming I'm speaking listen you are not just you are not just doing some Pentecostal nonsense the word of a king has power the Bible tells you the name of Jesus ah, the hand of God is upon my life I'm called Beulah Hefzibah you expect to be favored are we together and suddenly someone wakes up from his bed and starts thinking about you no sir people don't just think about people the Spirit of God is moving in honor to your priesthood and now he's causing someone who has forgotten you three years five years how are you how is everything and you say fine you are not surprised you knew what you did how are you um, it's been a while I hear you are in Lagos where do you live and the Holy Spirit speaks to him that's not the issue give him the house I hope you I hope you 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 know that I'm not just joking I'm not just it is true you see let me tell you when you understand priesthood your life becomes a miracle and a wonder first to you and then to those who see you because physically looking at you you will not add up but you will operate by a mystery that will continue to scare people this 
is listen 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 this is what makes galatians 1 24 a wonder that men will glorify god in you not just for you not just through you you have become an extension of spiritual possibilities that vetoes your background vetoes anything that is supposedly a disadvantage what then is the excellency of the ministry of the holy spirit what then is the advantage of the word all of the spiritual arsenals that the saints have this is what makes us a chosen generation a peculiar people our exposure to marvelous light the light of priesthood i'm not disadvantaged it's true and it's not just by shouting it you can shout it and remain there for many years until you finally say look it looks like i'm, I'm really disadvantaged <laughs> And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. Huh. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you. In you, Lord, we know there's more that's found in. Let me show you one dimension of priesthood and then we'll pray. Have, have you been blessed so far? The Bible says priesthood is about sacrifice. Now, listen very carefully. Priesthood is about sacrifice. Now, most times believers, even those who teach about sacrifice, whether it's finance or what service in the house of God, the truth is that, respectfully speaking, most times we teach it from a fleshly standpoint. And so it does not provide the power that the Bible says should come from it. Are we together? When Peter had a vision and he was sent to the house of Cornelius, the testimony that led to that encounter was the fact that the prayers of Cornelius and then his giving watch this please please understand this you will bless God and you will thank me for this revelation that I give you it will be a powerful tool that you will close and open doors with the priesthood of believers when you make spiritual intercession when you command possibilities listen carefully listen carefully please the bible gives us a very powerful mystery in the book of revelation that the old heaven and the old earth will one day pass away now this is powerful a physical space will one day move to where we do not know so automatically we know that physical scenarios can move they are living things are we together a life and a destiny that is full of pain is a physical scenario akin to an old heaven and an old earth that there is a technology that can move a sin out of a man's life and bring another one follow me please now he says that in terms of the new jerusalem but it's a principle you must understand that means that i must find a way and i can find a way to close certain seasons in my life and open others if the old heaven and the old earth can go away then it means anything in my life i can choose that the time has come for a phase of my life to go away and i want to show you the technology that controls that outcome pray in the spirit for one minute please pray in the spirit for one minute in the 
name of Jesus, I pray that you will use this truth and reprogram your life and turn your life and your destiny into a wonder. Please let me have your attention for a few minutes. We are going to pray. Genesis 8.22. Please look up. The Bible says that when the earth was judged, the earth was judged with flood. Flood is one of the elements of the supernatural. It's water. And then the animals came and Noah offered. It was a sacrifice. Please look up. Of all of the clean beasts, he offered sacrifice. And then the Lord smelled a sweet savour from it and made a proclamation that is very, very prophetic. It says, while the earth, so the earth is involved in this talk. Look up, please. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease it's an ordinance that came from the mouth of god are we together now that seed time and harvest shall not cease now watch this the principle of what in the body of it's been known for many years and not many people have understood it is called the principle of seed faith listen very carefully please listen Great men like Ora Roberts and Kenneth E. Hagin and great fathers of faith, patriarchs who have gone transited in glory. They did their best to explain it as best as they understood. But remember, revelation is progressive. Are we together now? Yes. So they communicated the perspectives that God gave to them. But one of the advantage of the apostolic and the prophetic ministry is that you are given illumination by the Spirit to see. And then you are granted the grace that can make all men see. Ephesians 3 is a grace that makes men see. Not just men hear, men see. Insight, illumination, understanding. Now please look up. The principle of seed faith, please look up, you are about to learn something that will change your life forever. The principle of seed faith is the only principle that is able to mimic what Jesus did. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he said, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. Are we Bible students? And that means that the principle of resurrection is such that the seed dies, not that the seed enters the ground. Entering the ground is not death. Death, therefore, is not the cessation of life. It is the gateway into another realm. We call it the cessation. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, you have to understand this. That means the door that leads to life is called death. Death is not a dead end. Death is a door. When you want to go into life, you follow the door called death. Now, watch this. That means... Watch this, please. Oh dear. When Jesus was about to end a dispensation and begin another one, he followed the door of death. Are we together now? And in dying, in his resurrection, he brought many sons into glory. Do we agree? Now, that is the same principle that happens with your seed. The Bible says that when you sow a seed, and agriculture attests to the fact that when you sow a seed, for a while that seed follows that door too. You call it death. It literally dies. And then suddenly something begins to happen. Another life. Are we together now? And then it produces after its kind. Are we together? Now the principle of seed faith is based on death and resurrection, not money. That means whatever is tied to that seed as the seed dies it must die are you getting the point now i can take everything in my life my trouble my pain my frustration and tie it to the seed the moment the seed dies the law declares that that dimension of my life must follow the seed to the grave and die too so i can end seasons in my life and open another one and the mystery here is found in um, first corinthians 15 please look at this verse 38 that god is able to give your seed another body this is still priesthood i can end shame and not have more shame as a harvest god can change the body 
of what died and make it laughter because seeds should produce after their kind but that there is a technology because there are some things you want to kill you don't just want more of look at this when you sow corn it's because you want more corn are we together now when you sow rice is because you want more rice but there are times in the technology of God there are times you sow certain things to kill them not because you want more of them and so that your faith can reconvert that manifestation so that it is not what died that comes out as the harvest God is able to give your seed another body that means I can sow shame I can sow delay and tie it to a seed and bury it as that seed dies my shame too dies my delay dies now I'm not going to get more delay as a harvest I may get speed God can reprogram that delay and what will come as a harvest is speed this is priesthood we can use seeds with understanding to end seasons and open others but God giveth it a body as it had pleased him and to every seed its own body I can sow in tears and not reap more tears I can reap joy it's, it looks like a deviation of the law because every seed gives birth after its kind if I sow shame I should reap more shame but you can sow it because you want to kill it listen there are things in your life that need to come to an end and I'm telling you just saying it must come to an end is not enough he programmed the earth as a system of advantage for you that you can carry a seed with understanding not manipulation with understanding and begin to list the seasons that must come to an end if the old earth and the old heaven can pass away then everything in your life can also pass away so you can end seasons lord i do not experience favor in my life i move forward but by struggle that scenario is like an old heaven and an old earth you can tie it to a seed that's why i said it somewhere and um, let me say it here it is dangerous to steal money in the house of God because you don't know what who is killing with the seed is dropping if you pick a seed that has not died what is on it is also alive it's true you see what went wrong with Judas because people were sowing seeds and Judas was helping himself Judas did not just die of frustration many things killed him someone's suicidal thoughts was sown away in that seed and he kept receiving it and did not allow it die your seed can program certain seasons in your life it is still part of priesthood now the, the the challenge is that because i guess because most seeds come as money and and so most people think that it is just a church manipulation to extract seeds from people now respectfully speaking i know that here and there sometimes people do not approach this subject of seed with integrity and and all of that but that does not mean that the principle is not true there are people who are long overdue to enter certain strong seasons and if God sowed Jesus to get us then it is important for you to understand that you can bury certain seasons and open up others and there are times that God can give speed please hear what I'm telling you the things I tell you are the things that I do I have ended seasons in my life and open others it's not just the will of God you enforce it through priesthood remember that priesthood is about sacrifice the sacrifice of spiritual legislation in prayer the sacrifice of warfare in prayer and dram your spiritual climate using the power and the technology of the seed it is true and it works that you can choose to say Lagos is a place of abundance and blessings and God is a God of portions that means there is a portion allocated for me Rehoboth there is a space that has been given to me 
but it is refusing to come and so you can call forth all of the lack the limitation and tie them to a seed as that seed dies you start rejoicing because you are looking forth for the harvest it works wonders and it is true the integrity of god is at the back of it many people have unconsciously received testimonies from these principles and you just hear them say look i was tired i was tired and then i saw the seed and things change but god is adding to our understanding it is not the money that brings you the sacrifice it is the priesthood the revelation of priesthood that is back of it is what is responsible the second reason why the ministry of priesthood is powerful is because you see the anointing the word anoint is an ordination it's a system of authorization that allows you to function in an office it was an ancient system that was used for kings priests prophets to anoint doesn't just mean to spare with oil to anoint means to legitimize your operation are we together now that means that you are not illegal as far as that function is concerned there is a throne in heaven that backs your operation that's what it means to anoint so when the bible says how god anointed jesus he was authorized to function in that office of the christ when the saints are anointed we are given authorization on legal grounds the sons of Sceva were not anointed by the Holy Spirit. That was why the demon said, no, this operation, although you used to get results, but it's still illegal. Because the Holy Ghost is not the sponsor of it. There is no legitimate ground upon which you should operate that way. Are we together now? And now, please watch this. Listen very carefully. When, when the anointing of the Holy Spirit is his ability at work in a man is god's very ability at work in a man now watch this please the anointing and all kinds of graces are in dimensions and they are in levels anointing is not general anointing just because you are anointed does not mean anointed once and it can solve every problem that's not accurate are we together now that's not accurate if that were so the disciples would not need to be filled with the holy spirit again and the bible would not make reference to the lavish dimension of jesus is being anointed how god anointed jesus it took out time to tell us the extent of the anointing please watch this i've shared it here i think maybe at, at the bagada church or so in one of the conferences that the anointing is in levels and the level of anointing that you possess or a servant of God possesses also reflects the dimensions of spiritual problems that can be solved just because you are anointed does not mean every problem is within your jurisdiction to solve in experience now you have to understand this please let me have two gentlemen make sure they are workers also please just come okay yes you come you come sir thank you look at this look at this now this guy is in need of favor open doors this guy is in need of healing i can have the anointing the grace for favor and the grace for healing but not to the degree that can solve this man's financial problems i can pray for him it is the limit of my grace that will be at work in him even if he falls down and stands up are you getting what i'm saying now i can and the the worst part of it is i can have the healing anointing alone if i pray for this guy he will fall down but what he wants is result in the area of prosperity he will stand up and every other remaining challenge in his body will be solved but the issue of the finance cannot be answered because the grace the dimension the anointing of the spirit works within the jurisdiction of his allocation any anointing does not solve any problem no no there are dimensions this is where impartation and other things come remember joshua was already filled with the spirit but moses was told to lay hands on him again are we together now yes so i can solve this man's problem and pray for him and say in the name of jesus let doors be open and nothing happens and you find out that all that continues to happen around my life is that people are healthy they live long they live strong but they are broke it's a reflection of the deficiency of the dimension of grace at work in my life 
now when that grace comes it will speak immediately now let's 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 change it both of them are trusting god for higher dimensions of maybe spiritual encounters or finances or whatever and i can have that anointing but not to that level we are two preachers respectfully speaking listen carefully let's say myself and let me use a great figure like benny Hinn, you know or um T.L. Osborne of blessed memory, he's gone now. These are fathers with proven track records. Are we together now? Now, I can pray for this man. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, let the cancer go. I'm calling the name of Jesus. I'm a sincere believer. I'm anointed. The Holy Ghost is at work in me. And you'll be surprised the cancer does not leave. And this guy will come and sit in a Benihin conference where he's just talking to leaders and the cancer leaves. Now, watch this. The difference is not, the, it's not God. It's not God. The same Lord is rich unto all. But something, the, there is the level of anointing. It's like money. If you have 10,000, you can eat lunch, but you cannot buy a car. If you are hungry, rejoice because you have enough for it. But if you want a car, start crying because you will need more. Are, are we together now? So, conferences like this create systems of upgrade where you can get higher dimensions of the same grace and then other i mean higher levels of the same grace and other dimensions that are missing in your life you can know what is on you by the results that are around you listen to me everything that happens around you is a report card an attestation to the grace that you carry this is true imagine this i can be walking with this gentleman watch this and then this man meets with me come sir and he chooses to ignore this one and he blesses me and then he passes i think he just blessed me no what was on me was programming my climate although we are close we will not get the same result are we together now you see that there was something on me that was calling for favor from him so although yes sir although i'm holding the hand of this one and we're walking together i pray in the name of jesus that we understand what i'm teaching that way we will minimize wasting our time trying to outsource things physically realities are programmed the realm of the spirit is that powerful that what manifests in the physical realm there is a grace when you carry a generation must hear you it is not just because listen 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 it's not just because you are the greatest preacher you can have all the anointing in the world and a generation will ignore what you are saying there is an anointing that makes hear ye him a possibility a verdict from heaven that will compel every territory to hear your voice there is a grace that calls for destiny help us they don't just come no they don't just come they know you just because you are holding the hand of a multi-millionaire he can look at you and you can even go to the restaurant with him and pay for your food he is not greedy what is on you is not allowing him bless you because the same man will leave you and go to another person and say please can i have the privilege of giving you a car so he's a giver not to you but to the one who carries the grace let me tell you this there is nobody that is greedy is what is on you that is programming your possibilities it's true priesthood where we don't sit down just begin to complain why is this not happening my business is not growing no the world has about 7.2 billion people that's enough bodies for god to use to bless you that's enough bodies for god f6.7.2 billion people cannot forget you someone has to remember you but is what is on you apostle why is it that people do not listen to what i'm saying is because you only have what to say you have not gotten what will make men listen i will never be the same i've touched your grace my life must change 
I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life must change. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life must change. I will never be the same. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life must change. 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 Please listen, HICC. Let this wine press be the one that will shift you into dimensions and realms that will turn you into a sign and a wonder listen there is no dimension and hear me when i tell you this it is true there is no dimension of possibilities there is no dimension of dominion that you cannot command the key is not to chase after things no everything in life was designed to be attracted to be drawn by the mysteries of the kingdom and that which i show you tonight is called priesthood is the mystery of dominion the saints reign we program the spiritual climate over us you pick favor from the realm of the spirit add it to january to december you pick speed add it to january to december speak open door add it january to december program every good thing to wait till you are there before it shows up if you are not there then it is allowed to be delayed till you show up priesthood who are thou mountain before zerubbabel that stands before you my brothers and my sisters i don't mean to insult your intelligence but what is in a job that god cannot give you listen listen I, I don't mean to be sarcastic it is true every day there are people looking for people to bless in this city what is stopping them from reaching you it is not distance i guarantee you it is not distance and it is not familiarity because gentiles will come to your light not your familiar friends no when those who know you bless you it's difficult to say it's god but when strangers feed your flock then you know that it's a dimension of grace where you wake up in the morning and you collide with all kinds of breakthroughs by evening you return back home and say my god have i not been in lagos and people say ah your season has come you say you are right but it's not time that brought it priesthood open me to another vista of spiritual possibility it's true we are going to pray and i i want find a way of believing what i share with you tonight your pastor allowed for this meeting so that you are shifted to another dimension whatever he does prospers it doesn't just prosper because he wants it to prosper it is what is on your head that is controlling what is around your life priesthood that you can pray your way up today down tomorrow spiritually lord i fold that season like a curtain out of my life priesthood the power of legislature what kind of dream is this that i always have every time i'm supposed to be lifted i see myself in secondary school i see myself in my former house no i don't know what it means but i know this is evil because the bible says the path of the justice has a shining light and you use priesthood blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us that he nailed his cross That every good thing starts in my life but doesn't end but the bible says he has turned my morning into dancing not dancing into morning he has turned my sorrow into joy 
and so you you step back and and take away your priest your your regalia and put that regalia of priesthood it's time to pray it's time to rearrange possibilities it's time to manipulate realities to send angels to send the ministry of the holy spirit to homes to systems to structures compelling them to bow to the lordship of the christ hallelujah please listen i know there may be many pastors following online and so on and so forth why is my church not growing why is growth epileptic i have a message i'm a man of character and integrity i love the lord with all my heart what is this thing that is making people not grow no people do not just come they are compelled to come there is a grace that compels people it's called anakazo it's the, it's the ability of the spirit he, he called for a feast and he sent to call people and they were giving excuses one said i just married i need to spend time with my wife another said i built a house i need to celebrate he said go to the street and the byways and compel them compel them listen to me listen there are dimensions you must enter but there are graces that is like that that expansion has not happened you can expand yourself like the molting of a snake come out of your old self into another dimension that sustains the power to command real results lord what is wrong with me i love god but i prophesy and every every case i mention is not true i say you are you're john i say i'm not john something is wrong i'm a prophet but it's not speaking get to the position of priesthood and pray out that shell of the flesh until there is a heavy investment of the spirit you come out from that place of priesthood and you become a blazing fire an inferno of fire Haya haya man of God in ministry here let me give you an honest counsel going around and giving cards for invitation and saying invite me I'm a man of God you will only mock yourself go back to the secret place the place where men are made for a generation and generate the kind of energy that defies being ignored that vetoes your background that vetoes your limitations pray yourself until you intercourse with an anointing a grace that a generation recognizes pray until an investment of the spirit comes upon you you called me into the ministry of signs and wonders lord my life cannot be buried manta salas kaparata ebreketekete baratos makaparakato seketekete pray hicc salabarata kat shobada sia priestu 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 encounter with power priestu encounter with authority the grace to change nations the grace to shift systems the grace to hold structures listen 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 my dear brothers and sisters hear me it is because the challenges in our lives have not met authentic priesthood that's why they remain are we together now yes sir the day you take the matters in your destiny serious 
you will melt it like wax before the fire because the bible says he maketh his angels winds and his ministers flames of fire you can pray your way priesthood while men sleep you are praying skapahush kanata lagos hear the word of the lord i stand as a priest i legislate from leki to vi to ikeja i call forth my helpers i call for the way makers used by god i decree and declare no more delay i program speed i declare by the power of the holy ghost i am Bula and hepziba i cannot be denied cannot be denied not on grounds of sentiments not on grounds of gender i stand as one who has been helped by god Hela parus kanakatos. Fit for your background. Fit for your limitations. Let priesthood become your advantage. Advantage in the spirit. Advantage in destiny. That the opening of your mouth is the opening of the gate of the destinies of men. Someone open your mouth and pray. Cry to the God of heaven. Hela pasalakata. Wine press. Let the maker make him. Let your priesthood speak tonight. the Lord who are rounding up please look at me listen to me you're going to pray just two prayer points and we're done for the night you're going to challenge the Bible says listen to me it says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds is a casting down every imagination is the word yes sir the vain imaginations of men and bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ you are going to pray this is priesthood now are we together now you are going to pray and declare that everything that is not consistent with the character of God and the speakings of prophecy hear the word of the Lord I come as one sent anointed by God and you will lift your voice and begin to make decrees the Bible says declare ye that thou mightest be justified lift your voice and pray make decrees speak speak to systems speak to structures are there men of prayer here I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost Lagos, hear my voice. Someone is praying. Bagada, hear my voice. Ikeja, hear my voice. Leki, hear my voice. Africa, hear my voice. I speak in the name of Jesus. Every barrier be torn down by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every climate above me, programming woes, programming delay, stopping a generation. 
generation from hearing your voice, manipulating your influence across a territorial space. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Someone is praying. Someone is praying over your ministry. I challenge powers over your business. I confront spirits in the name of Jesus. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I silence speaking. I silence ordinances. I silence operations in the name of Jesus. look at me it was the service in Psalm 3 that says many are they that rise up against me it says many are they that say where is thy God but then it says but thou O Lord that you are a shield for me then it says you are my glory and he uses the next prayer point you are the lifter of my head it says my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn even when the head of a unicorn is down the horn is not down the horn remains up at all times and i shall be anointed with fresh oil please listen listen i want you to take this prayer session seriously you are going to pray lord the grace the anointing the unction for the next level of my life the compelling ability of the spirit that must rest upon me and will resonate like an earthquake across a territory the infernal of fire that must come upon my life and turn me to a wonder i receive it now lift your voice and begin to pray the grace that will make my music ministry step into another dimension for the sake of his majesty the grace that will make my business become a wonder and praise the grace that will make my church a ministry a wonder and end that praise oh god that, that help the son of the living God I decree and I declare over everyone here and all the branches and all connected online I pray by the ministry of the spirit in the name of Jesus may mighty anointing come upon your life and shift it to a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit of prayer and supplication that will grant you the grace to travail i declare by the hand of god let it rest upon you now these three women i'm not ministering this night but these three women i'm seeing oil being poured on all three of them help them please 
New dimension. I shift you in the spirit. New dimension. New dimension. New dimension. Take that fire. New dimension. Dimension of power. Dimension of grace. I amplify your voice. I give your product wings in the spirit. I command the generation to hear your voice. I place something upon your life that defies being denied. I forbid you from being rejected. I decree and declare 